Hey guys, Ron here, and I thought it would be a neat retrospective to show you guys pretty much all the fake mon I made in 2023. <laughs> Let me know if you noticed any growth in my abilities as we go in order from January to December. These are basically entire clips from a ton of videos I made this year, so you'll know the Pokedex entries and my thought for each Pokemon here. I'm sure there are at least 10 fake mon of mine you missed, so this is a perfect opportunity. Keep in mind, you should definitely check out the original videos these fake mon are from to see their origins, concept, and creation process. Perhaps keep this on the side as you work or play. You can even use this to fall asleep at a later time, since I'm not really going to scream at any point in this video. Except for now. Ah! That's all. I hope you enjoyed this year of True Green 7, because there's more where that came from. Specifically the screaming. Let's begin with what was technically the first fake mon video of the year. Kind of an awkward one to begin with since it's a video where I redesigned a few of my old fake mon back when I just started making fake mon videos in 2018. Leaf Flutter, the foliage Pokemon, a grass flying type. Leaf Flutter flies where the wind takes them. They are carefree and conform to their surroundings. Their wings change color depending on the season. Their gentle nature makes them perfect companions for novice trainers. When tired, Leaf Flutter will rest at the tip of a branch, blending into their environment. They can maneuver around strong gusts of wind as if they are dancing in the sky. Their body is as tough as fresh lumber, and their wings as sharp as knives. They will circle around larger foes in seconds, cutting them in the process. During the winter, Leaf Flutter migrate in swarms to warmer locations. They have the signature ability, Drift which makes fire and ice type moves have reduced accuracy against Leaf Flutter, since the cold and warm temperatures of these moves disrupts the air around Leaf Flutter, allowing it to inadvertently drift out of the move's way. The shiny is actually just its summer and late spring form. Look at the difference four years makes. The colors feel warmer, the design has more personality instead of generic happiness, and the attributes are way more cohesive. I'm not going to pretend like the old one is terrible. I I'm sure there will be some that prefer the simplicity of the first take, but I humbly disagree. Brantero, the veteran Pokemon, a flying dark type. Brantero spend most of their youth in the sky, barely even touching the ground. The higher in the sky they are, the more they are happy. Throughout their life, they accumulate the ability to perform countless tricks in the air. At a younger age, when they recklessly perform aerial tricks, they do not watch out for other flying Pokemon and even airplanes in the sky. They have no qualms about harming others while performing their stunts. This nature gets themselves injured. Almost all of Brantero that can be found closer to the ground are older members of the species who don't have the ability or energy to fly high anymore. They live their life with regret and take their anger out on people and Pokemon. Brantero are jealous of young souls who live life to the fullest. They're hostile and rude. Only trainers who can provide an exciting life for Brantero can possibly train one. In battle, they enjoy showing off moves they learned during their younger years. They have the abilities Inner Focus, Intimidate, and Moxie. The shiny looks cool on its own, but it's also a small nod to the original blue colors. I mean, look at this. Brantero is definitely my least favorite design I've ever made, so I'm glad I can finally redeem it in some way. It's the perfect comparison of how far I've come, and there's still a long way to go. Maybe I'll redesign Brantero a third time in four more years. I know he's still just a boring old goose, but at least now that's kind of the point of the concept. I like how all the nods to old pilots are very subtle. Here is Hydrat, the pervasive Pokemon, a water type. Hydrat are highly intelligent. They're able to memorize vast networks of pipes. These city-dwelling Pokemon swim at remarkable speeds through sewage pipes. Hydrats spin their tail to propel them in the water. Their hydrophobic fur allows any liquid to glide off their body, keeping them clean and sanitary. They diligently look for valuable pearls and gems that they keep in their mound of back fur. They will barter with each other, other Pokemon, and even humans, exchanging their valuables for delicious food and other items that they truly desire. They are very social and do not fear humans. Hydrat live in entire underground cities. Their nests are more developed, advanced, and furnished than any other Pokemon built abode. They have the ability to Swift Swim, Pick Up, and Frisk. Their shiny would help camouflage in sewage and even the, and even the wild. Hydrat's original design is probably my second least favorite design of mine. I admit it was lazy. This new design is way more endearing. I'd have him as a pet. I love him and his back mounds. He's just a little swimmy guy. Toroizen, the dominant Pokemon, a water poison type. Toroizen leads a pack of their pre-evolved form. Their highly venomous spikes ward off all predators. Their spines are too much of a hassle to deal with, even for the hungriest of predators. Toroizen aren't particularly aggressive when trained, but in the wild, they will instantly attack if they sense their cubs are in trouble. Their tail fins are unexpectedly soft. Toroizen allows trainers at the doors to pet its tail fin. They have the ability to increase the temperature of their toxins, releasing venom at near boiling temperatures. It has a signature move called Burning Poison, a physical poison type move with 90 damage and a 10% chance of burning. They have the abilities Poison Point, 
Poison Touch, and Intimidate. It's shiny is simply scary, like that is the last thing I want to see in the water. I was so disappointed with the original Toroizen, I spent so much time designing it 3 years ago, only for it to still not look as successful as I wanted it to. I'm so glad that this new version finally looks like both a fish and feline. I think I did a fine job combining both facial features. The amount of detail is also just right. This design was the one I implemented the most of what I learned over the last few years. Next is the second video in which I turned anime characters like Deku and Denji into Pokemon. Braverdent is here, the heroic Pokemon, a fighting electric type. Braverdent are driven by the desire to help as many as possible. It idolizes heroic trainers and learns from watching other Pokemon in battle. It's incredibly intelligent, using all that it has observed to swiftly take down enemies and save the day. It launches itself with powerful electricity and lands devastating kicks. It never gives up and tends to risk damage in order to succeed in its endeavors. It has been observed to have the ability to manifest its electricity as tangible webs that it uses to grab onto opponents. It can even use electromagnetism to float above ground and sense danger. Its abilities are just and guts with the hidden ability Quick Feet. Its shiny is a blatant reference to All Might. I'm incredibly proud of this design. I tend to love the combination of green and black, so I can't help it. But it's crazy how it feels like Midoriya since I used his eyes while literally still being a bunny. Hopefully the contorted pose it has makes it look less humanoid. Razor Wreck, the Chainsaw Pokemon, a water steel type. Its name is clearly a combo of Razor and Wreck, but also sounds like Resurrect, which is literally what happened to Denji. Razor Wreck has the ability to control water and uses his power to conjure bubbles of water around their fins that they spin at incredible speeds in order to create water saw blades. This highly pressurized water can cut through ships. Razor Wreck loves to battle and can endlessly fight as long as it replenishes its energy by drinking water. It is dim-witted but well-intentioned. Razor Wreck are known to enjoy meals and the company of others. It will consume anything and will never refuse food. Razorek is famously kind to small Pokemon. It has specialized spines on his head that rotate, allowing him to cut using its snout when there is no water around. It has the abilities No Guard, Tough Claws, and the hidden ability Water Absorb. Its signature move, Water Saw, is an exact clone of Crab Hammer. Its shiny is basically blood red. Perhaps this one manipulates blood like power. I'm very certain I was able to capture Denji's energy. I'm very happy with the face and glad that I came up with a, a way to not literally give him chainsaw hands. He's over the top, but that's the essence of Chainsaw Man. Lacerate, the scissor Pokemon, a fairy steel type Pokemon. Its name is pretty tight since it contains the word Lass in it. This Pokemon is 100% female. Lacerate is covered in fur that reflexively hardens when it senses danger. The fur on Lacerate's long paws become especially sharp and can cut through bone. Lacerate hates authority, but will become best of friends with trainers that have its back. When they overlap their arms, Lacerate's blades become full-fledged scissors, which it uses to finish off its opponents. This signature move, called Scissor Blade, is a steel-type move with 110 base power and 100% accuracy, but can only be used when Lacerate isn't holding an item, since in order for her to use her scissors, she needs both hands to be free. Her abilities are Defiant, Mold Breaker, and Sharpness. Her shiny is based on Satsuki's color scheme. Like I said, I turned one of my favorite character designs into a Pokemon, so of course I think this design is the bee's knees. Colossal, the Attack Titan Pokemon, a Ghost Rock type. A vengeful spirit possessed a stone vessel, creating this relentless Pokemon. It yearns for the defeat of its enemies and will not rest until its quest is fulfilled. No one knows if it seeks to protect or simply enjoys to destroy. It lets out a loud wail that resonates from its hollow body, which paralyzes enemies and wakes the dead. It can order other ghosts to attack. It can also control the density of its rock hide. It's adept at hand-to-hand -hand combat and uses its diamond fists to repeatedly pummel its foes. Nobody has ever seen Colossal's real body. It gets angry whenever those curious enough try to take a peek into its chest cavity. It has the abilities Moxie, Iron Fist, and Anger Point. Its shiny is simply the Attack Titan's colors. This guy's dope. I'm very proud of the pose and overall silhouette. It proves my point that you can make a Pokemon based on a character without it literally having the same exact concept as its inspiration. Next is the video in which I created a bunch of new Paradox Pokemon. Lone Terror. A single-headed Dodrio? A flying fighting type. This aggressive prehistoric dino bird Pokemon is believed to be the missing link between dinosaur and bird Pokemon, described in a book about ancient Pokemon. It resembles Primal Dodrio found in a speculative magazine. This powerful Pokemon is said to be the true appearance of Dodrio before human intervention mutated its DNA, splitting it in three. It has the power of all three Dodrio heads in one deadly cranium. Its crest can bash diamonds, and it's extremely nimble and limber. It uses its legs to launch itself into the air. It flaps its primitive wings to guide itself back to the ground. It is said to contain the processing power of three Dodrio heads. It reacts in an instant. Its ability is protosynthesis, just like all the other ancient paradox forms. Its shine is a more quote-unquote natural-looking variation. 
looking like a modern bird, I guess. It's a pretty looking bird Pokemon. I wouldn't mind it being an actual evolution of Dodrio. It's the most different looking from the original design, but the concept is literally that it's just one headed instead of three. So it looks quite different even though the body is relatively similar. It could honestly prove some kind of connection between Galarian Zapdos and Dodrio too if you think about it. Iron Saw. A droid made to build cities of the future? A water electric type. It is eerily similar to a concept proposed by the Violet Book. It tells of a future civilization that modeled their droids after the efficient Bibarel. Iron Saw has the ability to cut and construct structures made of steel. It is powered by electricity that has been generated using the flowing water containers within it. Its goggles protect it from debris and its incisors can cut precisely. It is highly intelligent and able to make calculations allowing it to measure the size of any object. It is able to communicate pre-learned human phrases. It is well versed in safety protocols and makes diligent effort to not harm others in the vicinity of its construction. The Violet Book speculates that high-tech cities from the far-off future were developed using the power of Iron Saw. It has quark drive just like the other future forms. Its shiny is fully chrome just like the rest of them as well. I really like this guy. The idea of a competent, alert, and ultimately super powerful Bibarel is exciting. I would have loved if this existed. It's cute and cool. Twisted Vines The Scourge of Primordial Jungles? A fighting grass type. A menace described in an old expedition journal. Paranormal magazines publicized the supposed escape of this mad creature. Twisted Vines refers to both the physique and psyche of this ancient brute. It would capture prey with its thorny vines, but would finish them off in unpredictable ways. It can puncture its foes, squeeze the life out of them, or simply drag them along the jungle floor. Its erratic behavior has led biologists to abandon hope of understanding it. It moves with the grace of a dancer, seemingly relishing the hunt. Its shiny is a more poisonous looking variant. I wish I could make it a dark type, but I had to keep it fighting type, along with adding the obvious grass type it possesses. I really like personality shifts in uh, forms, megas, and now paradox forms. If this wasn't a paradox form, I, I would definitely reuse it as a regional form of Mian Xiao. I love Pokemon that look both pretty and dangerous. Iron Drive, the sentient car of the future? A fire steel type. This advanced form of transportation is described in the Violet Book, and an old book describes it as a strange object that came from the sky. The energy within Iron Drive combusts at such speed and power that it can cruise indefinitely. It is believed to be evolved car coal that began using alternate fuel sources. The byproduct of its engine is clean and does not pollute the air. It'll transport humans without resistance. I think the chrome shiny for this one looks pretty nice. I definitely like this more than car coal, but of course I can understand people not forming an attachment to a car Pokemon. I know we just got a car Pokemon in Revivroom and the Starmobile, but this one ain't half bad either. Crushing Plush The Wild Man Bear? A fighting dark type. A certain book describes this Pokemon as an uncivilized beware. It resembles a supposed photograph printed in a tabloid magazine. The strength of Crushing Plush is unrivaled. Nobody is able to escape its clutches. Play dead if you ever chance upon Crushing Plush. It will rush towards any living being and break every bone with a giant hug. It is believed that the mellow air of early Alola calmed these Pokemon down, slowly evolving them into modern beware. Its shiny is clearly shiny beware's color scheme. It's something I've wanted to see for ages. Next is the seventh installment of four artists designed Pokemon from the same description, where we had to create Pokemon based on famous proverbs and messages. I chose Uncle Iroh's quote, pride is not the opposite of shame, but its source. And another proverb I hear from Pokemon, you know, it's not always black and white. But please check out the full video to see the other artists' Pokemon and how our fake mon embody those proverbs. Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> Are those like little, um, like buttons? for his little like overall eggs basically so it's that is so cute it's like both 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 the ornament on like a faberge egg that's cool yeah it's this little lizard who doesn't want to come out of its shell because it's a very beautiful egg that protects him and he's very proud of this like fancy ice egg and wants it uh, wants to stay in it forever at the expense of its like speed and offense like <laughs> the egg can mm -hmm. withstand like most attacks but when it eventually gets damaged fabulous just repairs it quickly but with, with its like artistic uh, frost breath. And the name is a combination of Fabergé, Fabulous, and Basilisk. Basculus. Oh, so oh, wow. He's the humble Pokemon. And it evolves from Fabulisk at max friendship. So upon realizing that it has friends to protect it, and becomes Basculisk. Uh, and then Basculisk can like freeze water with the thermal pads on its feet, giving it the ability uh -huh. to walk on the water. And they leisurely skate around ponds. It, it loves mm -hmm. honing its ice skating abilities. Every time it falls down, it, it quickly picks up, you know, pick, picks itself up and continues to have fun. Just a chill guy. Dalmatian. How did I know it was going to be a Dalmatian? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love him. Yeah, there's no reason to not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, 
we just got uh, three new dogs in Paldea, and like, I want more. <laughs> I want I'm gonna need th- at least three more. <laughs> I did. I was when I was making. I was thinking about the Paldean dogs. I'm like a whole squad of different breeds, basically. Um, exactly. So this is the standby form. It's basically a loyal mm-hmm. and serious Dalmatian that uh, can consume fire. Basically, I mean, it's based on the the whole association between Dalmatians and firefighters. I mean, as you see, it has stripes, for example, on its like ankles, um, and those will like glow in the dark, kind of like, uh, or they will glow in its other form, just like uh, firefighter suits or well, the, the highlighter vests, right? Exactly those the vests. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Um, rescue form down the. Oh. Show. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, hello. <laughs> He's handsome. He is very <laughs> handsome. He <laughs> is. Uh, so its stats are boosted, and now it's a firefighting type, and it rushes into the battlefield to help those who are hurt. And its bright streak can, uh, its bright like uh, streaks can uh, be seen through thick smoke. And the fire it, it controls is so hot that it puts out other fires. Uh, <laughs> and it uses its signature move, burning bark, uh, which is a sound-based fire type move, which unleashes a fire that exhausts all of the all, all other fr- flames. So any fire type move uh, is disabled for five turns after it uses that move. Oh my, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Next is the fourth episode of creating pre-evolved forms for legendary Pokemon. NOG, the dormant Pokemon, from N meaning fire and Oji meaning prince in Japanese. Also, it kind of sounds like energy. A fire type. NOG are born when Entei settled down in one peaceful place. As Entei begins to keep its powers in check, it understands that it is time to pass down its knowledge. NOG are born during times of utmost peace, when man does not chase after Entei. NOG's cry instantly causes the temperature around it to rise. It is able to scale icy mountains alone and bathe in lava. NOG take their responsibility seriously and will focus on learning whatever task is expected of them. The more they learn, the larger their fire becomes. The pressure of containing this fire is overwhelming for NOG. They evolve when exposed to a firestone. They have the abilities pressure and flash fire, and I think he's very cute. Definitely understandable, a a simple little guy. But that's what makes Entei even more precious, the chance to evolve this dude into something epic. Prince Prout, the Prince Pokemon, a psychic grass type. This regal Pokemon has an abundance of confidence and optimism. It enjoys breathing life into gardens and fields. It takes leisurely walks through farmlands to greet its subjects. The plant life in its wake is always more fertile, but the praise it receives does not go to its head, as Prince Proud is aware that his actions are what people worship it for. It loves to ride up and down the hills on the back of Pokemon. Don't let its calm demeanor fool you. It is quite skilled in combat and will show no mercy on the battlefield. It gives flowers to those it defeats as a sign of respect. Prince Proud evolves when holding the reins of unity sealing its fate and imbuing it with regal responsibility. It has the ability Serene Grace, and it's shiny as royal purple. This is my favorite so far. I wish I could put him in the thumbnail, but people don't care about Calyrex. I hope you like this line a bit more now that Prince Proud exists. I don't know how anybody could dislike this dapper fellow. Here is Zygarde 5%. When 5% of Zygarde's cells manage to join together, they create this form. It journeys across the land, searching far and wide for the remaining cells of Zygarde. It soars at 100 miles per hour, impaling its enemies with its shark beak. Its speed will double when the ecosystem is in peril. They have the standard Zygarde abilities. I think this is a really believable Zygarde form. I'm surprised it doesn't exist. Maybe I'll make a 75% form in the future as well. Terrakio, the cave Pokemon. Turakio is timid to a fault. It avoids trouble and often trains alone in its cave. It only shows itself to its closest friends, but when the innocent are in danger, it rushes to the rescue despite fearing for its life. It is easily embarrassed and isn't willing to show others any skill that it has not perfected. The raw power that Turakio's headbutt contains can crumble boulders three times its size. After countless battles, these Pokemon tain to gain enough confidence to evolve. In fact, they evolve after using Sacred Sword 20 times. Now, I'm actually not very proud of this design. It still looks a bit awkward, and even worse, I accidentally drew its line art with a larger brush than the other Pokemon today, so it looks even more cartoony. Unfortunately, I couldn't fully decide on its proportions, but it's still a good first draft. RNA the RNA Pokemon. I've decided that this is actually the middle stage of a three-stage Deoxys line. Perhaps I'll make a prevo of this Pokemon that looks more like the virus that was mutated in the next episode. After the DNA of a space virus underwent a sudden mutation upon exposure to a laser beam, RNA began to take form. It floats through space with great purpose. It seeks the source of its mutation. It wiggles its tentacles to shift direction. Its outer membrane rapidly adapts to its environment. It hardens when nearing danger, becomes lighter when it wishes to travel faster, and becomes sharper when it wants to attack. It does not seem to have any malicious intent, but is driven by pure instinct to survive. It has the ability Levitate, 
This guy is very fun to look at. I love how he's staring at us. It feels alive. Now I'm about to show you the only legitimate fake mon I made for my April Fools video where I created more paradox forms. Check out the full video to understand the prank I pulled on my viewers. Iron Oracle. A utopian society's fortune teller? A psychic steel type. It resembles a sketch in the Violet Book that depicts a future seeing automaton. Iron Oracle uses dance to go into a trance, allowing them to see into the future. A council of Iron Oracle is used by an eventual government in order to predict crimes and disasters that might befall their utopia. It is theorized that the first Iron Oracle was created by a genius scientist in the image of his late wife. Iron Oracle uses unpredictable dance moves to fight in battle. Make sure to not get knocked out by their adamantine limbs as they are in their erratic dance. The citizens of the future worship Iron Oracle as a goddess. It has quark drive just like the other future forms. It shiny is fully chrome just like the rest of them all as well. It definitely works for this Pokemon. It came out exactly like I wanted to. I'm sure there are going to be a, a bit of Gothitel haters that would prefer this fake Mon. It definitely feels like something they would have done, even if it's a bit more suggestive than the average Pokemon. Next was the first video in which I turned memes like Doge and GigaChad into Pokemon. Here is Kashiba, the concerned Pokemon, a steel and normal type. Kashiba is very weary of fights. It's a pacifist by nature and does not look for trouble, yet it can sense trouble a mile away. When there is no choice but to fight, it will launch its golden coin at the opponent with enough force to instantly incapacitate a Kaparaja. Its fur is made of a gold alloy. It is soft when gently touched, but extremely tough when faced with an impact. Kashiba are anxious yet rational. They think before they act, even when confronted with an awkward situation. Kashiba are independent and skeptical, but very open to friendship. The orbs on its neck are actually clumps of golden fur that it needs into its large coin. They grow back after a few days, once plucked. Their shiny is silver, and they have the ability good as gold. I genuinely wonder if this Pokemon would be good competitively, so let me know. It was tough developing the final design of this guy since he looks awkward throughout the entire process, but I'm very glad with the end product. Dude looks shiny, and that's all I wanted. Trick Roll The Astonishing Pokemon, a bug normal type. Trickwall are able to mimic the voice of any Pokemon. They enjoy the sound of their songs and will dance along to their tunes. Trickwall will hide in a patch of grass and mimic the voice of powerful yet rare Pokemon. This helps deter predators, but eager trainers will often run in the direction of Trickwall's song, hoping to find a rare Pokemon only to encounter a singing Trickwall. The hollow bulb at the end of Trickwall's tail amplifies Trickwall's voice. Their skin is covered in smooth silk that keeps it clean and warm, and the translucent membrane covering its eyes shields it from snow and sand. It can basically be found in most climates. Once it gains the trust of a bamboozled trainer, it is extremely loyal. They never abandon a loved one and will only use their abilities to help their trainer. Trickroll has a signature ability, Surprising Voice. This gives priority to sound-based moves. This hopefully compensates for its slow speed stat. It will even get some stab from moves like Echoed Voice and Boom Burst. I know it doesn't look exactly like an English 80s pop star, but I think the concept really came together and gave us a cute little guy to enjoy. I'm super happy with how this Pokemon's lore is very faithful to the nature of Rickrolling. Nyabula, the endless Pokemon, a fairy psychic type. This Pokemon is able to stretch its body into a nearly two-dimensional state, allowing it to soar through the sky at near light speed. Its rainbow tails propel it through the sky. It sings as it flies. It is said that hearing Nyabula's full melody will bring eternal joy. The star-shaped patterns on its back glisten and glow when it's happy. Nyabula eats stardust and is able to fit in any crevice. It was once believed that this Pokemon was simply dim-witted, but it is now hypothesized that Nyabula is so incredibly intelligent that its blank face is a result of having understood all of this galaxy's secrets. Perhaps its desire to reach the edge of our galaxy gives it hope that there is more for it to learn outside of the Milky Way. It has the ability to levitate, and its shiny is more Pop-Tart colored. This one is definitely the most faithful. I believe the face is even more adorable than Nyan Cat somehow. It was tough making this Pokemon realistic, at least in terms of this franchise, but I decided to just have fun with it instead. Gigadonis, from Giga and Adonis, the handsome lover of the goddess of beauty. The sculpting Pokemon, a ground rock type. Gigadonis' body is made of soft clay that it massages in order to mold into masculine shapes. It is incredibly fond of human anatomy. It treats its body as a canvas, modeling its muscles and sculpting its limbs. It does not do so to show off, but rather to make itself look more approachable. Gigadonis is very polite, patient, and kind. It can contort its body and stretch its limbs in order to dodge attacks and extend its reach in battle. It will merrily end about with its monstrous strength. Its rock-hard jaw can crush boulders. It uses its indestructible horn to dig for more clay to add to its body. They have a signature ability called Clay Body, which makes them resistant to water-type moves, but it lowers their defense whenever they are hit with a water-type move. It's definitely better than being four times weak to water, I'll tell you that. The point is that their Clay Body just gets soft when hit with water. 
The shiny is a reference to the GigaChad memes, which are black and white images. God, the beta version of this design sucked. I was depressed with how it turned out, but then I decided to completely revise the pose and proportions, and then it came out amazingly. It looks friendly yet powerful, my favorite kind of Pokemon. Next is episode 6 of turning video game characters into Pokemon. Honestly, not my proudest installment in the series. Reptorid. The Stronghold Pokemon, from Reptile and Torrid, meaning hot or difficult. A Fire Dragon pseudo-legendary Pokemon. Reptorid rule over the pre-evolved forms in its territory. While ruthless leaders, they take exceptional care of their young ones. They will even let them participate in battle from a young age to harness their natural confidence. Every Reptorid has drive to protect and rule. They spend their days training and relaxing in pools of lava. The pads on their forearms burn with passion, allowing them to melt anything they touch. When Reptorid are ready to attack, they will stick their arms into the ground, soldering the earth, combining it with their limb, stabilizing their body like a turret as they unleash long-range fire blasts. The shell on their back is impenetrable with burning spikes and a rock-hard carapace. Its shiny is a reference to Fury Bowser, and its abilities are Flame Body and Shell Armor, with the hidden ability Drought. While I was trying to make the doodle a bit less complicated than Bowser, I think I overdid it with the fire a tiny bit, but I believe I was successful in making him look more animalistic and slightly more friendly, which is what you want from a Pokemon. Circuit Trace, the light speed Pokemon, from Circuit and Race, but, it's also, but it also has Trace in it. Very fun. An electric type. Circuit Trace has an electric core that propels them at light speed, allowing them to momentarily travel through time within the blink of an eye. They are experts at maneuvering through the air as they zap opponents. In battle, they will correct mistakes by quickly jumping back in time and pass by enemies by horizontally jumping forward in time. When they're above an opponent, Circuit Trace will propel themselves vertically downward and pierce their foes with their sharp electric heels. Half of Circuit Trace's body is made of pure unstable electricity, which allows Circuit Trace to phase through objects. Their infectious personalities makes their friends and allies believe in them. They love making new friends and pulling pranks. They have a new ability called Recall. Once per battle, Recall will activate when Circuit Trace misses any move, restoring any PP and HP lost during that turn, as long as Circuit Trace was not knocked out. Their shiny is electric yellow with a Union Jack color scheme. This is such a bubbly character. I love it. I'm proud of the pose and shape language too. It's clearly Tracer while also very much not being literally Tracer. Orisp, the Wisp Pokemon from O, the Hebrew word for light, and Wisp, a fire ghost type. These Pokemon wield a fire that restore life to decaying matter. The ectoplasm that covers Orisp's flames allows its fire to float, be controlled remotely, and even prevents others from being burnt by its touch. The warmth provided by Orisp's fire heals all, but when Orisp is in danger or battle, its body burns so hot it evaporates souls. These illusory Pokemon only show themselves when a forest is in danger. They are quick to save lives and put themselves in danger, despite their innocence and dependence on their friends. Orisp never loses hope and will forgive even the evilest of foes. Each individual Orisp has a unique talent and will convene with other Orisps to teach and learn each other's skills. For the sake of the environment, they are curious and love to learn abilities as they go on adventures. Its purple shiny was requested by chat as I was making it live on YouTube, and its abilities are Flame Body, Cursed Body, and Flash Fire. This is a very cute Pokemon with a classic look, would fit right in Gen 1 or 2. I won't take all the credit since the original design is great, but due to the proportions, it's cuter, at, at least to me. And the blue accents are sick. I'm sure it looks like a believable mythical to you. I also wanted to put it in the thumbnail, but it's the most obscure character in the video, so... Glacier, the warring Pokemon, from Glacier and Steer, an ice fighting type. As young calves, Glacier wreak havoc and disregard the safety of others, but as they grow, they become more honorable and exceedingly powerful. Glacier are generally calm but unstoppable when provoked. They will not attack those it perceives to be weaker than it, unless truly angry. They ignore those that do not interest them. When in battle, they are brutal and violent. They will sever their ice horn and create an axe head using their cryokinesis. They are covered in tough ice armor, allowing them to go all out without fear of getting damaged. Fighting powerful opponents only makes them more eager to defeat their foes. Glacier will go berserk if a hair on the head of a family member is touched. If Glacier comes at you wielding both of its horns, you won't survive. They have the abilities Thermal Exchange and Anger Point with the hidden ability Defiant. Its shiny is closer to Kratos' color scheme. I've always dreaded making a Minotaur Pokemon, but this was so empowering to make. It deviates enough from Kratos that I will probably put Glacier in the Pokedex of my upcoming region. Next, I created evolved forms for a bunch of cute mythical Pokemon. The video underperformed, but I'm proud of some of these. Mutant. The old species Pokemon, from Meow, Mutant, and Tint, to allude to the fact that it can transform and therefore change type and color. 
Decades after the discovery of the new species Mew and the creation of its clone Mewtwo, this Pokemon was theorized to exist. Once captured by a famous trainer, Mewtwo began to communicate about visions it received from space, perhaps from this theorized Pokemon Mutant. It is believed that Mutant is the fully evolved form of Mew. It contains the DNA of all Pokemon within it, but can also alter the DNA of others. It is believed that Mutant came down to Earth in ancient times to create modern Pokemon using its DNA tampering abilities. Perhaps before its arrival, Pokemon did not harness the elements and have the ability to communicate between species. Archaeologists believe it was created by Arceus along with the Lake Guardians of Sinnoh. It is unfathomably intelligent. We do not know its goals, but are sure it does not possess ill will. We believe it will protect Earth as long as the remaining Mew are not harmed. Mewtwo has become obsessed with meeting Mutant. Mewtwo says that it's excited by the prospect of learning from such a powerful rival. In fact, that's how Mew on Earth evolve into Mutant. It comes into contact with a Mewtwo who has seen visions of Mutant. When Mewtwo telepathically shows Mew images of Mutant, Mew regains memories and remembers that it can even evolve into Mutant, along with a sudden boost in intelligence, triggering evolution. This would only happen in the Fakemon region I'm currently developing, in which you're able to capture a Mewtwo with these visions in the postgame. Mutant has the ability to synchronize, but it was super tough making a natural looking evolution to Mew that looks both like an adult Mew, but also has some similarities to Mewtwo, whose traits were manifested inside of Mewtwo because of it technically sharing Mutant's DNA as well. Perhaps scientists were trying to make a clone of Mew, and it came out looking a bit like Mutant, mixed with test tubes and uh, human DNA, thus making Mewtwo look the way it does. I love the energy this Pokemon has. Intimidating, super intelligent looking, but potentially friendly. Celesif, the season Pokemon, from Ceres, a Roman goddess of agriculture, Sylph, which is a fairy, and Sif, the Norse goddess of fertility. What's funny is that it was originally going to be called Celesilf, but I, 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 I by mistake left out the L, and once I looked back at this deck sheet, I realized my mistake, but chose to keep it uh, spelled this way when I remembered of the existence of Sif, the Norse goddess, and Thor's wife. Celesif is a fairy type now. After wandering through time as a Celebi, Celesif chose our time to settle in and protect. Celesif only does this once they find a human who is kind to nature and Pokemon. They watch over crops and will cause them to grow instantly using their time travel abilities. Instead of jumping through time themselves, Celesif is able to change the age of entire acres of land, allowing them to naturally grow in an instant. Celesif does not hide itself from humans, because it knows it has the power to vanquish anyone who wants to abuse it and, and its power. The nectar from its cranium flower can heal anything it touches. Celebi actually evolves into Celesif in my future region after meeting a pure of heart farmer. There's a small farm in my future region right next to the player's hometown, and it seemingly has nothing to offer, but you'll be rewarded if you go there with Celebi. It has the ability natural cure. By now, you'll notice that the shinies are inspired by the shinies of their prevos. I've always wanted to see a fairy type Celebi evolution, even before fairy type was a thing. I hope it manages to be pretty without being too feminine, since I want Celebi to always be ambiguous in that department. Keldeon, the stallion Pokemon, a water fighting type. After training with the Swords of Justice and mastering Sacred Sword, a mature Keldeo evolves into Keldeon. In my future region, it would evolve after learning Sacred Sword and playing with the other Swords of Justice in my region's version of Pokemon Picnic. Keldeon has conquered every trial and surpassed its masters. Keldeon has managed to keep its hopeful disposition upon evolution, but it feels responsible to protect people and Pokemon. It has survived harsh battles and developed its horn to the point where it can slice through anything. Keldeon has gained a following of admirers and seems to know a friend in every environment it returns to. It continues to travel the world using its water propelling legs. It can jump higher than any Pokemon by unleashing an endless blast of water from its hooves. It is able to subdue an entire horde of foes using all that it has learned from the Swords of Justice. It has the ability Reckless with one of the most beautiful shinies known to man. I just realized now that I'm scripting this that I subconsciously incorporated some design aspects from the original Nightwing costume. It makes sense since just like how Nightwing used to be Batman's first Robin, so did Keldeo train under Cobalion and basically become his uh, own superhero. I've always been intimidated by drawing horses, and this is, I believe, my first horse Pokemon. It turned out great. My favorite fake mon in the video. What I've wanted since I've laid eyes on Keldeo. Some time skip character development. My favorite trope. Totem March, the spirit rank Pokemon, a fighting ghost type. It evolves from Marshadow after holding a Spectral Spear, an item that also boosts attack and special attack by 1.3 times, but drains HP from non-ghost type holders. 
Totemarch grow larger as the night becomes darker. They do not hide within the shadows, but prefer to terrify their victims as they slash them with their spectral spear. This spirit weapon can turn into a staff, sword, bow, and even shield. Their cape blows in the direction of battle. They have spent centuries as Marshadow learning all of the martial arts humans have to offer and now utilize it in battle. They feel restless when not engaging in combat. A hearty duel is enough to soothe their tormented soul. Totemarch are said to be the souls of fallen soldiers. Defeating foes in their current state can bring them to tears. The fiery wisp emanating from their eye is said to be an eternal tear as Totemarch is crying tears of joy after finally vanquishing their enemies. They have the abilities Technician and the sickest shiny in the universe. In the future region I'm developing, you receive the Spectral Spear from a martial arts master in the post game. So just level Marshadow up with that and it'll evolve. Marshadow is my favorite of the small mythicals, so I'm, I'm glad we can potentially make him more beloved by giving him an evolved form. Next is a video where I showcased a bunch of pseudo-legendary Fakemon that artists created online, and then I made two pseudo-legendary lines of my own for my future region. A very important video to check out fully. Pittyke, the hatchling Pokemon. Pitike are friendly and brave. Their tough leaf scales protect their aromatic center. The flesh of a Pitike smells incredibly sweet. This aroma attracts predators, but due to its amiable disposition, Pitike is always accompanied by friends who can help it fight back. It does not have any seeds to fire, so Pitike quickly learns how to fight at close range by utilizing its sharp leaves and fangs. It has the abilities Leaf Guard and Sweet Veil. This line's shiny is based on the other varieties of dragon fruit too. I think this was super successful at conveying the look of a traditional pseudo-legendary. Its color scheme is one of my favorites as well. But at level 35, Pitike evolves into Rhyndrake, the fruit Pokemon. Rhyndrake's hide is incredibly tough. No predator can penetrate Rhyndrake's shell as seeds begin to mature inside of its pouches. Rhyndrake's bite is acidic, and the juice that it produces is incredibly sour. This sturdy Pokemon is carefree and buoyant. This design took me th the longest to finalize since there really isn't any Pokemon with the type of shell Rhyndrake has. It's a bit awkward, but so is any middle stage that'll eventually evolve into a super sick final evo. At level 50, Rhyndrake evolves into Pentaya, the fruitful Pokemon from Serpent, Pendragon, and Pitaya. Pentaya are benevolent and strong-willed. They will offer their fruit to any hungry or injured Pokemon, but show no mercy to those who injure others. Their fruit is perfectly balanced taste-wise and nutritionally. It launches its sharp leaf feathers to attack, but can also fire a concentrated blast of acid and seeds that is stored within its belly. It can break boulders with its headbutts and subdue entire packs with the sweep of its tail and swipe of its claws. This magnificent beast was once thought to be a god in ancient civilizations. It has the abilities Leaf Guard and the hidden ability Seed Sower. I've wanted to see a dragon fruity Pokemon for so long, and I'm so glad I finally made one with one of my favorite color schemes. I was afraid I wouldn't be able to top Virilurk, the pseudo legendary I made from my Soul region, but I definitely think they rival each other. And to the theorizers in the audience, no, this is not going to be a Mexican region. Probogy, the note Pokemon, from Proboscis and Prodigy. Probogy are born with a love of music. They have perfect rhythm and strut around to the beat in their head. On their leisurely strolls, they exhale through their nose, creating pleasant whistles that put others at ease. Probogy are well-mannered and pride themselves in their abilities, but will attack if their music is not appreciated. They can produce nausea-inducing notes when Probogy feels threatened. They have the ability Soundproof and Technician. This dude is cute. I base it on young Mozart, a prodigy with powdered hair and cuff-like patterns on its wrists. Notice the kazoo-like nose and flute-like tail, and how that tail will grow as Prodigy evolves. At level 37, Prodigy evolves into Oboscus, the melody Pokemon. Oboscus' nose produces a wider range of sounds. This Pokemon likes to experiment with the music it creates using its nose. The melodies it plays seem too complex to the average listener. In battle, it confuses foes with its music. Oboscus is even able to manipulate the air with its fingers, creating melodies from the wind. Notice how its nose is now more of a flute and its tail modeled after a clarinet and oboe. The whole concept is that now my dude is a grown-up prodigy whose work is more scrutinized. It dabbles in music only masters can appreciate and make, like freeform jazz. But as it evolves, it'll be on his comeback tour, based on older classical musicians like uh, Beethoven. At level 52, Oboscus evolves into Thrashendo, the chord Pokemon from Thrash and Crescendo. Thrashendo can produce a plethora of sound from their multi-chambered nose and hollow tail. Their music can be heard from 10 miles away. They are consumed by the sound they make. Thrashendo seems vindictive of those who did not appreciate the music it produced early in life. Thrashendo's powerful arms can tear the earth in two. It drums on the ground as it plays what sounds like an entire orchestra from its nose and tail. It bears its soul and will share how it feels using the music it, made, it makes from its body. This Pokemon's saxophone tail and red tie goatee tied all together in my opinion. It looks like a conductor that hulked out. I know he's ugly, but music can be ugly and powerful. It can make us cry ugly tears. Music is 
personally the most powerful thing in my life, so I decided to make a Pokemon that is the manifestation of its primal power. Next was the first video of my new series where I invite 9 other Poketubers who each blindly give me attributes for a Fakemon I have to create. It's such a fun series that actually helped revive the channel after a rough first half of 2023. I urge you to check out the full video to understand all the attributes each Poketuber gave me and how they all came together, as well as their reactions. Crucibulk, the smelting Pokemon. These friendly yet fickle Pokemon have lived in deep gemstone caves for centuries, using their horn to mine for precious metals, which they smelt inside the crucible on their back. They eagerly eat the purified metals. Ancient civilizations would use Crucibulk's concave backs to boil water, sanitizing it in the process. Crucibulk were worshipped as gods. Ooh! Oh no! Yeah, the blue flame! The blue flame! I knew it! You had to! Like, there's, you just had to, that's the wave. 100% the wave. Oh, he's so sick! Oh, it was blue fire! Oh, he's like a little dino! And then the shiny, like, has the regular red fire and, like, the, oh, yo. Crucibulk. Oh my god, okay. Fire steel type. This looks like the type of Pokemon I would use. This looks very Callum Core. Oh my god. Oh my god, hold on, wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on. that's, that's kind of cold, hey, that's kind of cold, hold on, that is kind of cold, wait, that is, Crucibulk, okay, alright, yeah, so I got it right with the blue, the blue flames, yo, oh my god, dude, he's beautiful, I can't even lie, my eye immediately went to the shiny, the, the shiny coloring is just insane, but Frank, the regular sh coloring is fantastic as well, this is so cool. Whoa, okay. That actually looks really cool. What the heck? Oh, I like this. Oh, he did the shiny version as well. Hell yeah. This is very cool, Ron. Whoa, hey, yo. Crucible. Okay, all right. I see it now. I see it. I see it. Illusense, the smoke Pokemon. Illusense tend to appear at cemeteries one night out of the month. Half of their body is made up of aromatic smoke, which wafts as they fly. The incense that this Pokemon releases from their hollow horns calms restless souls. When spotted, it will release a smoke screen and vanish. It loves to scare groups of children who enter cemeteries as a test of courage. Oh, that is so sick. That is so, <laughs> that's so sick. No, that's cool. That's cool. I take it back. The bagpipe be like the be wait oh yeah it's bagpipe like oh okay okay that I mean that worked I mean it's it looks spooky how what okay <laughs> so I was right it does kind of coil up a little bit oh bro he's got like a halo he's got like a smoke screen halo look at his face dude his face whoa. I feel like depending on how you look at his face, you can see different faces. Wow. Oh my goodness. That's cool. Oh, this is cute. This is really cool. Ooh. Okay. No, that works. I love this Pokemon. Yo, I love it. I'm not. <laughs> I, I love it. I love this. Next is a video where I evolved a bunch of Pikachu clones. Barisu. The Ellis Squirrel Pokemon from Bari Bari, a Japanese onomatopoeia for stored energy and crackling, plus Risu, Japanese for squirrel, an electric type. Barisu are more combative than their pre-evolved form. They tend to spend their time on the ground and will not run away from danger. The sharp fur on their back jolts up when a threat is near. They face their foes by holding their ground and firing high voltage electricity from their tail. They will dodge anything that comes their way, but immediately counter with their own attack. Energy tends to be repelled by their electrified fur, allowing most attacks to glide off Barisu's hide. While aloof and standoffish, Barisu will rub cheeks with their closest companions. This Pokemon will ignore those that it does not respect. It now has the abilities Static, Lightning Rod, and Volt Absorb. Their shiny is inherited from Pachirisu. Pachirisu evolved into Barisu when leveled up holding a Storm Fragment, a rare item that boosts the accuracy of electric type moves. Barisu is my type of Pokemon. These sleek and serious electric mammals are what I love having on my teams. I've been wanting this for almost two decades. I wonder if this type of design is what you guys were also craving in a Pachirisu Evo. Evo? Evo. I'm super satisfied. It really looks like a leaked Gen 4 Pokemon. Kumolga. The Sky Squirrel Pokemon from Kumo, which means cloud in Japanese, and Momonga, their word for flying squirrel. 
an electric flying type. These Pokemon spend their time at the top of the tallest skyscrapers. When they spot prey, they will leap from buildings and literally fly using electromagnetic force and wind. Their hood-like coats keep them extra warm during uh, stormy nights, and their cape is a beacon to unruly Pokemon that this Pokemon means business. Their stripes glow to strike fear at a distance. During foggy nights, its appearance is reminiscent of a fierce Umbreon. When it spots trouble from its vantage point, Kumolga will swoop down to save the day. It discharges enough electricity to take down an entire group of enemies. It will use its prehensile tail like a grappling hook. Kumoga will create thick gusts that obscure its body, vanishing in the process. It has the abilities Static and Wind Power, with Motor Drive as the hidden ability. They evolve from Imolga when leveled up at the highest point in my future region. I gave it a red shiny so it looks more like an intimidating superhero too. Nothing too bright and hopeful like it's a normal color palette. This one definitely increased the cool factor at least three times. I thought it was a natural progression from the previous form since Imolga always had this hood-like pattern and instead of a cliche mask, a hood really does freshen up the superhero trope. These cute yet cool Pokemon are the best kind, so I'm always happy when I get to make some. Odene, the antenna Pokemon from O meaning great or king, Denki meaning electricity and antennae. As the Dene's electricity generating organ fully develops, it consumes too much electricity, evolving into Odene. It sends electrical waves from its whiskers to order around its port of the Dene. It usually stays in its lavish den as the Dene bring fresh electricity for it to feed on. Odene uses the dish on its tail to fire concentrated beams of electricity whenever its home is greeted by a predatory Pokemon. While greedy and gluttonous, Odene will act as its horde's front line of defense when attacked by enemies. During battle, a line of the Dene will provide Odene with unlimited energy so it can continuously fire its parabolic beam, a special electric type move with 120 base power and 100% accuracy that does drain an eighth of the user's HP. The Dene actually evolves upon learning this move. I just thought it was super funny to take the smallest Pikachu clone and make it huge and chunky. It's cute and appealing, has a whole new concept, and is an evolution that makes sense based on the concept of the previous form. I want to know if you think so too. Togedarashi, the spiky Pokemon, from toge meaning spike, denki meaning electricity, yamarashi meaning porcupine, and arashi meaning storm. The less relaxed environment of my region compared to Alola makes Togedemaru evolve at level 38. The spikes on Togedarashi are constantly standing up, always attracting lightning for it to store. It carries Togedemaru on the crevices between its spikes. Its back provides ample protection for its children. Togedarashi is responsible and caring. It is able to maneuver through tight spaces without puncturing its surroundings. It uses electromagnetic senses to perceive its surroundings. It's able to extend its spikes in battle as it backs up into its opponents. It uses its spines as a conduit for a large amount of electricity. It has the abilities Iron Barbs, Lightning Rod, and Sturdy. I know this Pokemon doesn't look like a bigger Togemaru, but like, that's how most evolutions work. I mean, Nectric doesn't look like Electric, Agron isn't the larger Lairon, the shapes often end up differently. A Hedgehog evolving into a Porcupine is definitely a, a very Game Freak thing to do, and this is a mighty fine evolution in my opinion. More Peckish. The Impulsive Pokemon, from Moromoto, meaning Guinea Pig, Harapeko, meaning starving, and Peckish, also meaning hungry. It evolves from Morpeko when Oro Wheel runs out of PP in a certain forest in my region. When Morpeko's impulses take over, it evolves into Morpekish to survive. Morpekish are master hoarders. They crawl on the ground, collecting all the food that they can in their furry pouches. Morpekish will never share its food and will plot elaborate plots to steal more food. They are incredibly intelligent, but only put their smarts to use when acquiring food. They will punish those who steal their food. The static that accumulates as they crawl on the ground is released when Morpekish attacks with its surprisingly tough head. They no longer have the hunger switch ability as they are always up to evil deeds. Now they will get pick up, gluttony, or electric surge. When Morpekka was released, I thought we'd get an evil form, so I made one. I love sinister looking Pokemon. If a mon successfully pulls off a specific personality, I'm always down. Next was episode 8 of the 4 artists series. The challenge was to make two separate Pokemon that evolve in the presence of the other. I created some of my favorite fake mon lore in this video, so check it out. Raccool. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys. <laughs> it's just Raccool. Oh, I like that green. I love That's the green. Sick. Yeah. Yeah. That's a cool raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely Wait. thinks so. Is it like the night goggle kind of green? You know, night vision? It, night vision? Yeah, it yeah. definitely has night vision, but I, there's a reason why it has green eyes and a stripe. And I will tell mm. you that in a second. <laughs> Man, that... You've nailed this Pokemon like double shade line. That is the, like definitely the cleanest Pokemon double shade lining I've ever seen in my life. It is very fun when the double shade is successful. I agree. Yeah. 
true. It even has a texture, that kind of texture the official art has. Uh, Raccoon is highly intelligent and very egotistical. They know their home turf inside and out. They make connections with a lot of stray Pokemon, but never really form like close bonds with them. Like with all the, you know, he's just that guy that, you know, everybody knows, but nobody's really friends with. Um, <laughs> but since birth, they eat what they can. Uh, they, can, they eat what they can find, uh, just like trash, basically. Uh, to them, it's a gourmet meal. <laughs> their stomachs can withstand even the most rotten garbage. Uh, they believe they're very popular, but in reality, many perceive raccoon as a nuisance. Just, I mean, I have raccoons in my backyard, same thing. Even though they're cool, they're a nuisance. This is the most important part of the lore. He has the ability immunity, you know, so he can't get poisoned. Okay, so remember that. Mm -hmm. Trash muncher. Literally. It's basically an early root Pokemon, but again, I said this is associated with the legendary technically, so I love when that happens. Here is Nuclearl. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. I love the lab coat. Ooh. I mean, yeah, it's it's like a mixture of like the, the cooling tower, a coat, also has like a tiara, so it looks like a princess, but it's like, again, th these are, nu Nuclear is born from the waste produced by the legendary that is hidden beneath the region and they cannot control their massive power and as a result every pokemon around nuclear becomes sick except for poison types who are immune to it um this lonely pokemon is ostracized by like most pokemon and rests in just soft piles of garbage bags um and they have a signature ability called decay uh which poisons any pokemon on the battlefield when nuclear is switched out including your own pokemon in double battles oh i love the hair too like the front hair dripping down it's always fun when you can make like a natural part of the body look like something like more human, like like a hairstyle like this. Mm -hmm. Also, like the 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 ponytail sort of fades, or goes translucent or whatever at the top there. Yeah. Oh, it's not like the, the, the green line art on top of it. It's real good. Yeah. Thanks. Mm. Yeah, it's just the fumes. You know, dis is, is dissipating a word. Is that the word I'm looking for? Dissipating. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the whole point is that she, she can't really form any bonds with people because she gives them cancer. <laughs> oh, and she's sad about it. Oh, poor thing. Um, except for poison types, but she doesn't really want to hang out with Trubbishes all day. Um, although she's... What the Trubbishes do? The Trubbishes didn't do yeah. anything, but she can smell and they smell bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so by now, I guess you may see where the story is going. The only place Nuclear hangs out is the dump, where Raccoon just so happens to frequent. Um, and as a result of eating garbage, Raccoon is immune to Nuclear's radioactivity. Um, and Raccoon shows Nuclear around town and they quickly become friends. Um, in fact, the reason Raccoon has green eyes is because it's been eating garbage contaminated by Nuclear all along. Uh -huh. Oh, the psych out. This is a love story. Better than Twilight, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so when you have both of these in your party and level up Raccoon, it will evolve and combine with Nuclear. Raccoolossal. What? Whoa! <laughs> no! What the hell? Oh, that is mad. And this is my favorite Pokemon I ever made. <laughs> With the shapes on, on the raccoon, this, yeah. that's sick. That's sick. So cool. Oh my God. You can't split these two Pokemon, right? Can no. you, or can you? You cannot. Oh, I want to see that wolf just chilling. I mean, wh what do you call him, raccoon? It's, wow. yeah, it's a raccoon wolf bear now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love the patterns. Yeah, it reminds me of, um, is it Zygarde kind of? I like mm -hmm, when I, like you, mm -hmm. you kind of just think slightly think about other Pokemon because I've been watching um, Loxton's videos re recently and he's been talking about how like you know all Pokemon ca are kind of like connected a little bit yeah, yeah, like, yeah they're all like ancestors of everybody and everybody's like connected sort of exactly personally I'm a huge I've said it a billion times on my channel I love it when Pokemon have explicit connections to other Pokemon yeah uh -huh. but even when they're yeah even if it's just like like obviously I don't imagine this you thought of Zygarde being connected here but my brain just like slightly thinks about it and then that just feels like it adds depth even if it's not true, you know? <laughs> well, the question is, I mean, it's hard to tell, but the legendary <laughs> that this Pokemon is connect that these Pokemon are connected to is actually a real, uh, it's an existing Pokemon, like a real Pokemon, Ooh. a real legendary. The question is whether or not you can tell which legendary uh, mm. Nuclear is a by byproduct of. Oh, um, okay. Rackalossal is the guardian Pokemon and Rackalossal has become lifelong partners with Nuclear and Rackalossal absorbs half of Nuclearl's toxins, allowing them to control their power and not indiscriminately hurt surrounding Pokemon. And Rackalossal can barely contain the radiation that is syph that it's siphoning off Nuclearl, so that's the reason why the fur on his front paws are partially decayed, revealing nuclear energy. 
And Rock Colossal takes down enemies with irradiated slashes that can dissolve boulders. That's that's my lore. Um, and this pair just travels around the region doing going on endless adventures. She's, you know, Nuclear is finally happy. Yeah, I love her little personality shift. <laughs> love it. Yeah, I love that. How adorable. I can't yeah. stop staring at this guy's face. He's got such a good shape to him. Thank yeah, you. It's it was tough because it's like yeah. you still have to make it look like a raccoon, but it's like a wolf now. Uh-huh. They're so strong. It was definitely inspired, uh, visually at least, by Princess Mononoke. Then I created split evolutions for some starter Pokemon. Graptor, the jungle Pokemon, a grass dragon type from grass and raptor. This Pokemon perfectly camouflages into the dense jungle. It leaps from treetops, swiftly gliding down to attack its prey. It is more brutal than its forest counterpart, Sceptile, but it's still honorable. It keeps the peace by vigilantly looking out for poachers and those who would dare harm its environment. It can see for miles with its night vision. Its abundance of leaves allow it to absorb enough energy during its daytime slumber in order to hunt and play at night. Its thick leaf hide allows it to keep warm at night. The sharp leaf feathers on its arms make for excellent offense and defense. It has the abilities Overgrow and Infiltrator. Its shiny is identical to Sceptile's. As a Sceptile man myself, this is still pretty tight. It's everything a Groval could be. I love the colors. I always enjoy when the final evolution of a family has darker colors, and I like how wild yet still noble looking this Pokemon is. I hope Groval fans like it. Comedeep, the performative Pokemon, a water dark type. This Pokemon has mastered the art of physical comedy. The slapstick humor this Pokemon performs is popular with children. It does not enjoy performing for adults who find its comedy lowbrow, but Comedeep will hide its true emotions. Its tear-shaped mark, along with Comedeep's perpetually perky, dark lips, make it difficult to truly understand Comedeep's true emotions. Its barking laugh produces bubbles that it can control with its voice. It often goes too far with its comedy. It will slip on ice and even slap itself in order to get a laugh. It can physically withstand the harsh conditions its own art puts it through, but Comedeep will hold a grudge on those that do not crack a smile at its performance. It has a signature ability called Liquid Laugh that does exactly what Liquid Voice does. Its signature move is a physical attack called Bubbling Slap. Comedeep slaps its opponent at such intense speed the water on its flipper boils on contact. It has a chance of burning the opponent and has 90 base power. The whole concept of this guy is that you never know what its true intentions are. It's performing for the sake of art, not because it's truly happy, so its actions are rarely an indication of how it feels. It's a nice concept for a dark type Pokemon in my opinion. It's unintentionally deceptive and the markings it has are kinda creepy, at, at least to me. Ember Rush, the midfielder Pokemon. A fire electric type. Ember Rush are incredibly versatile and pride themselves in their skill in battle. They take training and even leisure play very seriously. They do not make unnecessary moves and never showboat. The pads on their feet produce sparks that give this Pokemon its insane speed. Its reflexes are among the highest in the Pokemon world. Its thunderous kicks leave scorch marks in its wake. It will kick burning pebbles with impeccable aim. Ember Rush defends its territory by rushing its opponent in teams. It will overwhelm its foe with its relentless speed. It has the hidden ability Electric Surge. Its signature move is an electric version of Pyro Ball called Lightning Ball, which can paralyze. Its shiny is sick. I want that on my team. This is exactly what I imagined Scorbunny's final evolution was going to look like. I bet if this came out before Cinderace, it would be way better received as a Scorbunny final evolution. But what do I know? Crocolith, the mangled Pokemon, a water rock type. Crocolith's ever-growing rock jaw can pierce iron. If a substance is particularly sturdy, Crocolith will slash it with its sharp claws. Crocolith files its claws under pressurized water. Crocolith are surprisingly gentle, but ruthless in battle. They live in wet caves. Its long snout can access small cracks filled with nutritious water. It will run at its opponents with its mighty arms clawing at the ground. Even if prey manages to pry itself from Crocolith's jaw, Sharp rocks will stay embedded inside Crocolith's prey, slowing them down and eventually inflicting enough damage for Crocolith to catch up. Crocolith have the hidden ability Strong Jaw and a new move called Slurry Crunch, a physical move that does 50 base damage where Crocolith bites its opponent, embedding sharp rocks that will reduce the foe's HP by his 16th every turn. Its shiny is also my kind of shiny. How can I not love this Pokemon? I mean, look at it. I don't know if I succeeded in making it look too different from Feraligator, but that, that was tough since it still has to look like it can evolve from Croconaw. Next is part 2 of turning memes into Pokemon. Check out the full video to understand all the memes I used. Contember, the composed Pokemon, a fire type. 
Contember's flame grows as danger increases. This accurate measure of the situation gives Contember the foresight and ample time before things get rough. They are calm and collected in the face of adversity. They only get anxious on rainy days when their abilities are stifled, making them unable to sufficiently respond to any possible crisis. After successfully taking care of trouble, Contember will celebrate with roasted berries and beans. It shares food with smaller Pokemon. Contember has the ability Blaze and hidden ability On Tempo. An inverse shiny felt appropriate. It was tough trying to find details to add to a very simple cartoon without making it feel over-designed. I think I succeeded in making a middle stage starter that doesn't feel too awkward and gives you hope for its final of all form. Petal Leap, the showman Pokemon, a grass type. Petal Leap are skilled performers and craftsmen. They use their sharp leaf limbs to cut down young trees, turning their logs into wheels. They attach petals made of branches and roots to create wooden unicycles, which they ride through the forest. Petal Leap is able to jump incredibly high while on its unicycle, performing tricks midair. The most skilled Petal Leap make their way to towns where they perform for food and gifts. They love the attention and would even perform for free. Everybody in town celebrates the arrival of Petal Leap. They hibernate during the winter. Their return to civilization marks the beginning of spring. They have the abilities Lightning Rod, Vital Spirit, and Infiltrator. They have a signature move called Wooden Wheel, a grass type version of Rollout. Ever since I had the idea for this series, I wanted to make a Nat Boy Pokemon, but it was too obscure for the first video, so I pushed it back to this episode. It has the exact energy I imagined it would. Opaque Coffin, the Pallbearer Pokemon, a Ghost Steel type. Opaque Coffin are born from the souls of those who embody the spirit of dance. It carries its coffin, which summons music from the underworld. This Pokemon struts at night, dancing to enchanting beats. The music from its coffin knocks listeners unconscious. Opic Coffin is able to feel vibrations from miles away as they resonate inside its metal body. In battle, Opic Coffin will attack using its coffin. It spins around with enough centripetal force to send a Tyranitar flying. Its white sash can extend, wrapping around its opponents too. Its kicks are extremely powerful. This Pokemon is very charitable. It will uplift those who are sad about a lost loved one. They have the abilities Dancer, Steely Spirit, and Hidden Ability Mummy. It has a signature move called Coffin Dance, a 120 base power physical ghost move that lasts 3 to 4 moves and confuses the user. Basically a ghost version of Thrash. Its shiny showcases a coffin that looks similar to the one in the meme. Opie Coffin is my boy. I'm definitely adding it to my region. It's so cool. Dude looks like a JoJo stand. I guess this is the feeling of being proud of a son. I definitely want to make a pre-evolved form in the future, maybe on stream where you guys can watch. Its pre will look more like a mummy with, with more of the white patterns around the body. Revenape, the Forsaken Pokemon, a ghost type. This spirit of endangered Pokemon manifested into this angry beast. Revenape displays intense aggression for those who have betrayed it, but it never acts on its hatred. In the wild, this Pokemon only uses non-damaging moves. It will only attack another Pokemon during competition. In battle, Revenape will engulf its opponents with its gaseous body and pummel its foe into submission from all directions. It will drag its enemy's soul around. Revenape can expand the holes on its body to dodge attacks. It has the abilities Cursed Body, Anger Point, and Perish Body. It's shiny is the color scheme I would have wanted if it didn't feel right to make it purple and blue. I hope this Fakemon honors Harambe. Next was the first video in which I created new Fakemon by replacing letters in existing Pokemon names. Antike, the buoyant Pokemon. These seafaring bug types have hollow abdomens full of water and air, allowing them to float and swim. When a flying type predator appears above them, they release a blast of air and water from their mouths, allowing them to sink into the water and swim to safe depths. They form highly cooperative colonies underwater. They are super friendly and are particularly close to Remoraid, who they usually compete with in water gun competitions. It senses the change in water flow and weather using their antenna. They will approach boats. Humans will let them eat leftover crumbs. When it pops its head out of the water, it is mistaken for a Mantike. It has the abilities Water Absorb, Swarm, and Water Veil. It's shiny is the same as its original Pokemon inspiration, just like all the shinies in this video will be. This is one of the only Pokemon in the video that would work in the Pokemon world. It could easily be a regional fake like Wiglet or Toadscrew. I think you'd easily fall in love with it once you get over the uncanniness of seeing a Pokemon you're familiar with have a completely different body shape. It was a cool first example of what we're doing here today. Hori God, the virtual reality Pokemon. Once Arceus, the sole creator, heard word of a man-made Pokemon, it came down and imbued Porygon with its power to show humanity what true creation was. Initially, Porygon was taking well to its newly granted abilities, allowing it to create virtual characters and worlds that others could see and interact with. But the bugs in its code manifested in a terrible way, leading to Porygon's rampage. It unleashed the power of Arceus on humanity. 
darkness swiftly overtook the land and meteors fell from the sky. Thankfully, all of Pori God's creations were mere illusions, but the fear and panic caused by Pori God's virtual reality caused mass hysteria. Arceus came down to take back its powers, fixing its mistake. This collaboration between man and Arceus was a failure. It has the ability multi-type. There is no reason for this kind of Pokemon to roam the earth. Its existence isn't very safe, so I gave it this short story type of lore. It could easily be uh, the plot of a Pokemon film with a climactic battle between it and Arceus. The point is that it isn't your average Pokemon. If you like the idea of Porygon Arceus fusions, you'll like Porygon. Hamask the Spirit Pokemon This Pokemon is possessed by the spirit of a deceased human. The mask acts as a conduit between the soul and the original Pokemon's body. It roams around seeking the location of its past life. Some say the soul belonged to a human from a long lost civilization, dooming Hamask to roam the region endlessly with no hope in finding remnants of its past life. It has the ability Mummy. I think this Pokemon has a chance in being a Yamask form in my future Pokemon region. Perhaps there are Yamask masks scattered throughout the region and some poor unfortunate pig Pokemon put it on and became Hamask. I love the contrast between uh, the serious mask and goofy chubby body. It's kind of tragic in some way. Looks like an ancient figurine. Sumo Wudo, a grass fighting type. Unlike Sudo Wudo, Sumo Wudo is made of soft, pliable wood. It retains a lot of water in its body. It constantly drinks to bulk up and is unmovable. It's a master of staying in place. It will take endless beatings. It is incredibly brave and honorable. In ancient times, Sumo Wudo were used to guard castles. It spends its time competing with Hariyama. It is a very respectable rival. Sumo Wudo are proud of their friend's accomplishments and are glad to be a part of their rival's improvement. It has the abilities Sturdy, Guts, and Sheer Force. I hope you understand that this is a grass type now, since it doesn't have Pseudo in the name anymore. I love the duality between its uh, adversarial expression and its actual personality. It's very loyal. I can respect it. Hopini, the jumping Pokemon. From the moment they leave the pouch of their mothers, these Pokemon begin to hop around at astonishing speeds and heights. They are incredibly caring. They carry a white rock to emulate their mothers. It spends all of its time focusing on making sure its rock doesn't fall out as it hops around. This this distraction causes Hopini to frequently bump into trees. It loves to play around with children. It will let its most cherished friends hold its rock for a few minutes. Its abilities and shiny is the same as Hapini. It's a kangaroo Hapini. What more can I say? Probably the least changed so far, so I can't really take that much credit. Trap Hunch, the Fight Pit Pokemon. Trap Punch will spar with each other in sand pits. Other Trap Punch will stand at the top of the pit and watch as two Trap Punch duke it out in the pit. Trap Punch is unflinching in the face of any attack. While they take damage, they won't show it. Their expression remains blank as they pummel their opponents with tough pincer fists. In a Pokemon battle, as a last resort, they will use their pincers to clamp down on their foe. However, they never use this technique when fighting amongst themselves in sand pits. It waits at the bottom of sand pits for a fair fight. They have the abilities Iron Fist, Arena Trap, and Sheer Force. I like the idea of a Trap Punch Fight Club. Next was part 2 of 10 Poketubers Create 1 Pokemon. Again, check out the full video to see which attributes each Poketuber gave me. Beware Hoaxlush, the Night Chill Pokemon. When the sun sets, Hoaxlush sleepwalk into desert towns, dramatically dropping the temperature. Its body is made of invisible ice droplets. Since all that can be seen is its smiling ice tail, petrified townsfolk assume it to be a floating little creature responsible for the damage caused by Hoaxlush's sleepwalking. In reality, Hoaxlush wouldn't hurt anyone while awake. Yo! Wait a second! Oh! Oh, that's awesome! Wait, he's got a little guy on his tail! He's got a little heart on him as well! Let's see! Ho- Ooh! Hoaxlush! Oh, that is awesome! That is a good name! Hoaxlush, it's a fake- That's my Pokémon! Wait! A fake slush! Holy frick! Okay, I see. Ooh, yo, I was not expecting like the the scorpion esque. Oh, I mean that's kind of like it's like a scorpion. Oh, okay, so it's not a lizard at all. Wow, that's sick, dude. The use of color is very clean. Oh my gosh. Ooh, okay, okay, I like it. I like it, especially with the ice crystals for the eyes. So playing around with the tinted lens, you can't really see the eyes underneath, so it also could be sleeping. So uh, I guess both work out that way. Check out Rectonic, the impact Pokemon. This Pokemon trains deep underground by absorbing seismic energy and releasing pressurized aura that makes volcanoes erupt. Rectonic can manipulate the density of the minerals on its body, allowing it to change size. On the rare chance this Pokemon comes to the surface, the hydrogen and oxygen trapped within its hot body melts and fuses, causing moisture to fill the air. Scientists now theorize that water appeared soon after this species crash-landed on Earth. Ooh! 
A little bit of a rhino. I see you. That's kind of sick. Wait a minute. Oh, well, okay. I thought he's going to be goofy, but he's actually just cool. Ooh, ooh, look at him. Okay, okay. So not a turtle. I'll take the L on that one. Oh, yes. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, dude. Wait, this thing is sick. Oh, and the shiny's great, too. Oh, look at it. Whoa. That's so cool. It's got, like, redness coming off him, like an aura of some kind. And shiny is awesome as well. It has the ability to dress on, which is... Such a silly ability for it to have. It's a rock type. Oh, he looks so cool. I, I just wonder how he makes it rain. This thing is related to Golem. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. It's like, it's like Super Golem. Next is the first video in which I turned cartoon characters into Pokemon. It was so exciting. Spongeoy, the poorest Pokemon, a water rock type. These extremely friendly Pokemon find shelter within drowned tropical fruit under the sea. They are constantly eager and positive. They slowly walk their way up to the beach to greet other Pokemon while laughing. Spongeoy can instantly absorb any liquid that it comes in contact with. When playing, it will gently release bubbles from its pores. In battle, it releases a constant jet of pressurized water. Spongeoy's soft face can take a beating. It bounces back from a hit in an instant. Spongeoy shrivel up and become brittle when the sun is unobscured. They look for shade at noon. When Spongeoy run out of water, it makes its way back to the sea. Spongeoy sees the good in everyone. They are often too naive for their own good though. They have the abilities Water Absorb, Regenerator, and Unaware. Their shiny is a reference to Patrick. I thought it would be tough to design a Pokemon like this. While the face was difficult to get somewhat right, the shape wasn't a problem at all. It definitely has the aura of Spongebob. Mouse Blotch, the ink Pokemon, a poison normal type. Mouse Blotch run around leaving a trail of ink footprints. They are able to extend their tail and legs to triple their usual length, allowing them to jump high, run fast, and grab objects. Their body has the properties of a liquid. Mouse Blotch is able to fit into cracks the size of their tiny eye. They can redirect attacks with their fluid body. They are nigh impossible to grab because they slip through fingers with ease. This cheery Pokemon likes to entertain. It dances and creates art. When its efforts aren't rewarded, they steal a possession or two. Mouse Blotch attacks by shooting inks from its ears. To finish off a foe, it will kick with enough force to launch a blinding streak of ink. This messy Pokemon is a nuisance to find in your home. They generally avoid water. It has the abilities Liquid Ooze, Pickpocket, and Contrary. It's shiny is self-evident. This is incredibly cute. It's technically not the first Disney mouse I made on this channel. A while back, I turned Sora from Kingdom Hearts into a mouse with a key inspired by Mickey Mouse, so I wanted to make sure to not insert any Kingdom Heart references into this design. It's a very delightful guy. Monkair, the carefree Pokemon. Monkair has been discovered after disappearing for a hundred years. They are kind, caring, and love to play. They can control wind, allowing them to create balls of air that they ride around on. They can ascend into the sky using a blast of wind and glide down with their loose cape. They create tornadoes by twirling their tails. Monkair is light on his feet. In battle, it avoids its opponent's every hit. It does not like to strike back, but when its HP goes down to half, its ability, Spirit State, will activate. Now its inner spirit fights, unleashing this Pokemon's true potential. In its Spirit State, the power of water, ice, ground, rock, fire, electric, flying, and fairy moves are doubled. It's a master of the elements. It communes with the spirits and is feared by humans. Monkair does not enjoy the immense amount of power it possesses. It simply wants to live a life of fun. Monkair shiny is referenced to Season 3's headband and Aang with his uh, Kuzan drip. The name ended up being perfect for this Pokemon. I can't believe I never associated the fact that Aang is a monk and that that kind of sounds like monkey, but also the fact that lemurs and monkeys are both primates. So in the end, I did end up with my idea to combine Aang with Momo. I love the colors and patterns on this mod too. Herit, the wise Pokemon, a grass type. Herit live in spacious holes that they dig using their carrot tools. Herits are incredibly intelligent, able to fashion all sorts of inventions using their fruits and vegetables that they cultivate. They live peaceful lives and only fight back when provoked. They rarely use their actual abilities in combat though, and would rather outwit opponents making their own moves backfire. When backed into a corner, Herit will sprout a giant carrot from the ground and beat their foe with it. Herit's signature move, Carrot Swing, is a physical grass type move with 110 base power and 100 accuracy, but its power is halved when used in succession. It has the abilities Analytic, Cheek Pouch, and Contrary. 
I don't know if I really like this one because it's green or because I'm generally proud of this design. It's, it's the right balance of clearly being Bugs Bunny, but having none of the proportions of Bugs Bunny, who has way longer limbs, bigger head, completely different eyes, cheeks, and color scheme, but it works. Next was an ambitious video where I fused every legendary Pokemon together. I created three Pokemon, a fusion of every sub-legendary Pokemon, a fusion of every main legendary, and a fusion of every mythical Pokemon. They were supposed to look like abominations, but be as cohesive as possible. Check out the full video to understand how each legendary is represented within each fusion. Primera, the legendary Pokemon, a psychic flying type from Prime and Chimera. Primera roam every region, galloping across oceans and leaping across mountain tops. The feathers on their arms extend when they jump, allowing them to glide. They are untamable. No trainer has ever caught Primera. Folklore from every region and era has defined it as the embodiment of freedom. It does not submit to those that want to control it for any purpose. In battle, it jumps high in the air and unleashes a powerful laser from its beak and causes earthquakes when it lands. One swipe from its dense arm will shatter an entire fortress. It has mastery of every single Pokemon type. It has the ability pressure. It's shiny is just another cool variation. This one speaks to me because it's not brutish or cute. It does, it does feel like it has the spirit of the roaming legendaries and various benevolent beasts in this subcategory. It's clunky, sure, but, but it feels like a Pokemon version of the many fused animals that we see in real world mythology. If on Earth we have mythical creatures that combine various animals, it makes sense for this to represent such myths in the Pokemon world. Amalgrim, the banished Pokemon, a dragon psychic type from Amalgam and Grim. Legend has it that Arceus created this Pokemon to take over its responsibilities so it can rest. It possesses the powers of most powerful legendary Pokemon, but since it contains too much power, it cannot master every single ability it was granted. It can bend space and time, but cannot fully control them. It can open wormholes, but cannot control where they lead to. It can change the weather, but not for long. It took its duties as Arceus's replacement too literally, and before human history, Amalgram attempted to take down the Creation Trio, Weather Trio, and Aura Trio in order to be the sole protector of balance. It was defeated in a joint effort and sealed by Arceus within a parallel dimension. Legend has it that Amalgram is still desperately opening up wormholes in order to get back to our universe and perform its duties. Honestly, I just came up with that story right now, and that's pretty sad and messed up. I like it though. It's shiny is incredibly sick. Black and gold, like most cool shiny legendaries. This is my personal favorite. It's exactly as intimidating as I wanted it to be. When I imagined a legendary fusion, I imagined this. Grace Fae, the mythical Pokemon from Graceful and Fairy, a psychic fairy type. This Pokemon does not enjoy the presence of humans, and prefers to work in solitude. It goes around the world imbuing the environment with its life force. It dances to make plants grow, and sings to fill its surroundings with a calming aura. But if a human were to witness its rituals, Grace Fae will angrily leave. Deep down, Grace Fae wishes good on all life, and performs its duties for the sake of the planet. It is simply antisocial. In battle, it stretches its limbs and attacks with its hexagonal ring. It has the ability Serene Grace. Its shiny is angelic. I want to see shinies like that in the game. I'm sure many of you guys find this one to be the bee's knees. It's very pretty. I love the colors and love how it represents many mythical themes. Next was a surprising video to perform super well, turning legendary Pokemon into regular Pokemon. Alpacius, the mortal Pokemon. This Pokemon can be found in mountainous rural settlements. Humans use their fiber to make clothes and blankets. Towns that herd Alpacius tend to be very prosperous and peaceful. It is said that people who wear Alpacius clothes receive good luck and fortune. Alpacius is kind and calm. In battle, they spit at their foes with dangerous pressure. They are able to harness the elements with their spit, throwing flames, shooting water, and even breathing frost. In ancient times, they were worshipped as gods. According to myth, Alpacius is the form Arceus takes when it wants to observe humans clothes. This is why Alpacius herders treat them with total respect on the off chance that they are in the presence of the Alpha Pokemon. Its abilities are Fur Coat, Fluffy, and Super Luck, with the same shiny as Arceus. I've been wanting to design such a Pokemon for ages, so it's super cool to see it fully realized. Centuror, the Grand Pokemon from Century and Roar, a Ghost Dragon type. Centauror can exist for centuries. They are able to slow down their metabolism for years in order to preserve their body. For millennia, they were believed to be halfway dead. They don't respond to most stimuli, but are very punctual. They will eat, sleep, and train at the same time each day. They have perfect internal clocks. In some civilizations, Centauror were responsible for keeping track of seasons and holidays. In battle, they will let out a ghostly roar that sends chills and freezes opponents. 
It can crush enemies with one headbutt. It has the abilities Rock Head, Telepathy, and Sheer Force. I thought a similar shiny to Diago's will work and even fit better on this ghost type. It has access to Roar of Time, by the way. I hope you love the allusions to the power to control time, too. Perhaps it's a descendant of Diaga. Lethalaman, the Swallowing Pokemon from Lethal and Salamander, a poison dragon type. Lethalaman are not to be messed with. They whip around their poisonous tendrils in battle. One minor scratch from their spikes will inject enough poison to incapacitate. When poisoned by Lethalaman, the body begins to swell, increasing in size as it fills with toxins. Lethalaman can breathe in all the toxins back into its body if it chooses to spare its opponents. They are not native to our universe. It is believed that Eternatus is the result of one of these Pokemon being violently transported into our world, stripping it of its organs and increasing its power exponentially. It has the ability Poison Touch with the hidden ability Multiscale. I gave it a fun shiny too, very bright to warn others of how dangerous it is. As a pseudo-legendary, I imagine it has pre-evolutions. Remember that I plan on giving Eternatus slightly different lore in the future, so this isn't my final headcanon, just one for this video where I make a non-legendary out of it. I hope you like how I translated Dynamaxing into this Pokemon's power to make you swell. Sculpt Timber The Puppeteer Pokemon a grass normal Pokemon. It's a master artisan. It whittles figures from trees. Its work is so realistic, it is mistaken for living beings by forest Pokemon. It can control wood remotely, allowing it to puppet its creations. It uses its wooden puppets in battle to attack foes and take hits for it. When it has no puppets left, it battles with its flexible body. It is not the fastest, since its body consists of stiff wood, but its segmented limbs allow it to completely turn body parts and even extend them. It can attach fibers into other Pokemon and manipulate manipulate them like puppets as well. Sculpt Timber is said to be a distant relative of Regigigas. It has a new signature ability called Woodworker, which gives priority to grass type moves. This is perfect considering its speed. I wonder if Sculpt Timber would be more useful in battle than Regigigas, despite not being a legendary anymore. Its shiny is reminiscent of White Birch in Autumn, one of my favorite kinds of scenery. Honestly, this is, this is the one I'm most proud of. While it looks a bit like a Reggie Wood, I have something else in mind for that. In my opinion, it exemplifies the purpose of this video and trend the most. It really is the concept of Regigigas, but far less epic. Prismini The Prism Pokemon, a psychic rock type. These Pokemon wander around from cave to cave. When direct light hits Prismini's body, it glows and refracts light, giving away its position. Pokemon like Gabite and Sableye immediately attack. Thankfully, Prismini is able to shoot out lasers of light in every direction. Prismini recharge by basking in light every morning, but they will go back into hiding when they've filled up on photons. The older the Prismini, the darker its body. They are born completely clear. It has the ability Prism Armor like Necrozma since it still totally fits. And of course, it can learn Photon Geyser and Prismatic Laser. This guy is super cool. Would be one of my favorite Pokemon if it were real since it balances out all the extreme traits of Necrozma and gives it a much more likable personality. But I would understand if you love the mystery and lore of the actual Necrozma more. Next was a collab with Pragmagic where we showcase Fakemon for every unused type combo. Half of the Fakemon are ones he commissioned to so, so check out the full video because I'm only going to show you the ones that I personally designed. Gypsum Monk, the Stash Pokemon from Gypsum and Monk. These tiny Pokemon are incredibly brave. They sneak their way into treacherous caves and steal from Gabite, Sableye, and Drudigan to add to their own growing stash of gems. Gypsum Monk stuff giant hunks of jewels into their cheeks as they run away from layers and banks. They trade valuables with Hydrat, which is another fake mon I made, if you didn't know. In battle, they pull out big pieces of rocks from their cheeks and chuck them at opponents. They will even block hits by placing rocks between them and their foe. They have the abilities Cheek Pouch, Unburden, and Pickpocket. Hallucerate, the overwhelming Pokemon from Hallucinate and Lacerate. These Pokemon's many patterns, spikes, and legs overwhelm opponents. Foes are unable to determine how to attack Hallucerate. They end up giving up. Even if a predator were to make a move, they would get impaled by Hallucerate's spikes. When it's Hallucerate's turn to attack, it crushes its opponents within a deadly coil. It releases an order that makes it look even bigger and more menacing than it truly is. Hallucerate simply enjoys strolling on the sea floor and does not wish to fight. It has the abilities Marvel Scale, Intimidate, and Swift Swim. Enchant Rain, the approaching Pokemon. They swim in sand dunes, leaping high into the sky and landing next to a potential friend. They love approaching strange Pokemon and people. They show off their talents every day. Enchant Rain summons gusts of sand and fairy dust that it uses to carry off others. In battle, it sends its opponents flying with a blast of sparkling sand. They can instantly pulverize the ground beneath them, creating new sand for them to travel in and evade their foes. Yeah, now if you want the whole spiel, go, go check out the original video about my Asone region starters. All you gotta know is that as a fire fairy type, 
It represents all the good and spiritual aspects of fire, not the destructive ones. This is a Pokemon of light, warmth, and life. It makes crops grow, but causes droughts when humans aren't upholding good virtues. Next was a video where I made Mega Evolutions. Mega Flygon, a bug dragon type. Tremendous power surges through Flygon's body, splitting its wings and extending its armor. In this more aerodynamic state, it hovers over the land indefinitely and creates tornadoes in its wake as it blasts off. Its helmet and visor is protected from the sonic booms it generates and the loud melodic flaps of its razor sharp wings, but as a result, it can barely hear its trainer's commands. Mega Flygon is incredibly impatient and narrow minded. It can breathe at maximum altitude too. It still has levitate since it's, it's flying, I mean, even more now, although I'm aware that an immunity to ground doesn't really do much here. I was debating speed boost since it's already super fast, and tinted lens would have been perfect if it could have had two abilities. Actually, never mind. Tinted lens it is. That makes way more sense. Instead of a shiny similar to shiny Flygon, I opted for one that looks more like a military helicopter. Regardless, it's exactly what I imagined a Mega Flygon would look like. Bug references without being too bug-like and monstrous, sleek and majestic without looking too beautiful, a nice balance of a lot of tiny changes without it looking like a completely new Pokemon. Mega Scovillain Excess energy has caused another head to sprout and wings to bloom. The green and red heads are more affable now and submit to the furious yellow head. They spew spicy flames in all directions, destroying all plants in the surrounding area. It craves dominance and wants to be the only plant in its territory. Mega Skull Villain flaps its wings in order to spread dry heat and engulf more terrain and fire. This Pokemon is an anomaly. Scientists still debate about whether Mega Skull Villain should be considered a dark or dragon type Pokemon too. Some have postulated that its vile nature is due to the excess infinity energy coursing through it and not its actual desires, and others have declared that its body only vaguely resembles the shape of a dragon, but it does not contain any dragon energy, usually associated with dragon types. As a result, grass and fire is the most appropriate. It's shiny is neat, basically some other natural colors for peppers. I gave it Skull Villain's hidden ability, Moody, since that was already very appropriate. I think a lot of people expected this to be Skull Villain's evolution, but to make sure it still looked like a Skull Villain instead of a full-on evolution, I made sure it maintained every trait, just more monstrous. It's very appealing to see all three pepper colors now. Mega Chandelure The energy given to Chandelure has increased the size of its flames and the spirit energy it contains. Its arms now orbit around its body. It spins at hypnotic speeds, creating a strong defense against attack. It can extend its orbiting arms, increasing the range of its flame barrier and illuminating spaces in the process. Its near white flames burn off excess energy obtained through Mega Evolution, so it must constantly absorb life force in order to maintain its Mega form. It releases a tall vertical light that attracts all Pokemon in the area. As its ultimate attack, it spins sideways and releases a spiritual flame blast from its head. It now has the ability to levitate, which I'm sure is useful, right? It has enough special attack for Flash Fire to not be needed anymore. But who am I to talk? It's the most subtle Mega design of the bunch, but does build upon the existing design without being extravagant. I love the color of the flame, so I ain't complaining. Mega Tinkaton. Now covered in armor, all energy has been diverted into Tinkaton's hammer. It gleefully releases a steady laser from its hammer. Tinkaton is completely stable in this state, as its hammer has absorbed all the dangerous infinity energy. It is no more erratic than it is in its usual state. In fact, the armor it has fashioned from Corviknight restricts its movements, so it only makes deliberate attacks. Its new armor and weapons seem to have fully manifested this Pokemon's intelligence. It has incredible battle IQ and can aim perfectly by calculating trajectory. I gave it the ability huge power, but only now realized how we now have two steel fairy type megas with huge power, and I'm sure many would find that scary. You love to see it though. It's basically the chaotic energy Tinkaton already had, but at full capacity. It could zap or bonk you, and it doesn't have to worry about the consequences with all this armor defending it. Next was part 9 of 4 artist designed Pokemon from the same description. The prompt was fact versus fiction. We created art drawn by people within the Pokemon world's past that misinterpreted how the fake mon we made actually looks, just like how people in our past misinterpreted exotic animals as mythical creatures. The, our first piece is a photograph taken uh, of a cave painting found in Unova. Okay? Okay. It depicts these. Ooh. Uh, Okay. Basically, these towering figures with glowing eyes near what oh, we this is cool. can be described as like flying saucers. <laughs> Whoa! Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> okay. Rockwero, the hat trick Pokemon. Give us the lore. Give us the. Give us the. Yeah. I want to get immersed in the story. These honorable rock types travel the desert at night as their glowing eyes and chest lights the way. They use their detachable hats to shoot down foes with great aim. They're <laughs> The rock hat is incredibly heavy. They are able to lift and throw them using telekinesis because they are psychic type. Uh, their psychic powers oh. also allow them to hit the targets from a mile away. 
So they're very, they're sharpshooters. No way. The next peak is antique art from the, from a thousand year old Colosian manuscript. So from Kalos. Uh, it tells the tale of an expedition to a land near Unova, um, where travels witnessed this. <gasps> yes! Yes! <laughs> yes I love manuscript. This. I just love the people in the little castle. <laughs> that was the favorite part, yeah. Turkulka. Oh! Oh, nice. Whoa. Dang, that is a fortress. Because when they, when, the, let's say Europeans, Colosians hear a fortress, they'll, they're going to put like a castle, right? Oh, okay, but it's not. It's got the, the Mesoamerican, like, ziggurat thing going exactly. on. <laughs> So, Torkulkan's a clay hide gets taller as it ages and grows its family, basically, because its chicks travel within the walls of its fortress hump thing. Oh, <laughs> that's adorable. Has an indestructible head, you know, one peck could shatter a boulder, um, and also the <laughs> land quakes as it walks, so the, the sound of its mating calls reverberates within the holes on its face. Ah. Mm. So that's why oh. the travelers thought when this thing walks, it causes earthquakes, both because it makes a set lot, a big sound, but also because it's a, it's a ground type. It, it, it can do earthquakes. It's Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is. It's like a little less unusual in the world of Pokemon. Yeah, it's not because it's like big or anything. It's just because it's a ground type. <laughs> yeah, you just can't use earthquake. Why not? It's based on, <laughs> it's based on turkeys in the Mayan culture and Mesoamerican cultures in general, as well as, oh, let me show you, an oscillated turkey. Whoa. Oh, nice. That's Good looking just, bird. Instead of like a wild turkey. Next was another video where I redesigned some of my old fake mon. Collectic. The waiting Pokemon. From collecting, chick, and eclectic. Basically meaning that this Pokemon has a, a wide taste. It's no longer Poi Lover because poison isn't really part of its abilities anymore. Collectic stands in the water collecting floating berries to eat. It uses its powerful legs to kick trees, knocking down fruit and even other Pokemon. Ever since it was young, it has foraged and scavenged with its parents. It's fearless and even jaded from a young age. It knows much about the world and considers itself to be refined. It savors the taste of berries to the point that it can memorize the taste and effects of berries for years. Its signature ability, Assimilate, allows it to gain the effect of the berry it consumes in battle, thus making it immune to the status problem for the rest of the battle. So if it's holding a cherry berry and gets paralyzed, the cherry berry heals the paralysis immediately, and for the rest of the battle, Collectic is immune to paralysis. This perfectly sets up its evolved form. In the previous iteration, it simply had immunity. Now it can possibly be immune to any status effect, so that its evolution permanently gains one of those resistances. While the original was still cute, I personally think Collectic is much cuter now. The original also had the color scheme of its evolved form, while it's far more interesting when chicks have a completely different set of feathers than their adult counterparts. The beak is still cute without being thin, and the the legs are still long without being too noodly. It looks like the legs are actually part of this Pokemon's existence and not an afterthought. Let's move on to Involover. Involover, the invulnerable plover. Upon evolution, Collecta consumes its favorite berry, turning into Involover. This Pokemon swiftly catches berries mid-air as they fall from trees. They have perfect wing-eye coordination and will stand in raging water as they funnel food directly into their beak. In battle, it twirls around gleefully. Its immunity to a certain condition makes it feel invulnerable. Due to its experience with countless status conditions, it acts as if it's immune to all of them. The dot on its wing is the only indication of which status condition it resists. Its ability, Inoculation, is based on whichever berry it held while evolving, so you can customize the ability of your Involover. The orange dot on this particular guy indicates that it's immune to burns. Its hidden ability is assimilate, just in case you don't want a permanent immunity. So if, for example, if it had a yellow dot, it has an immunity to paralysis, while a blue dot means it can't be frozen. Another secret tell is the color on its eyes. The shiny represents the status condition colors that uh, weren't represented in this Pokemon's color scheme, like purple for poison or pink for sleep. I thought it was much better to have this single dot as an indicator of its ability, instead of its entire chest pattern changing, like in the original. That way it's not easily noticeable what its ability is in competitive battle. You have to pay attention to its wings when it spreads them to attack. And even then, with the shadow that its wings cast and the similar shades these colors come in, it won't be easy. The new version is definitely less flat, more likable in personality, and its patterns actually mean something, instead of being literal Egyptian plover patterns. It definitely feels like one of the regional birds this mon was designed to be. It was the one fake mon I was embarrassed to include in my Asone Pokedex a while back, since it was outdated. Now it's making Papa proud. Smokehalf, the calf Pokemon. 
Smokehalf is very modest and bashful. It doesn't like sticking out much, but will explicitly show disapproval when its demands aren't met. It is very diligent when it comes to practicing with its fire. Encouragement from those around it helps build its confidence. Smokehalf are constantly looked after, and in ancient times they were cultivated to prepare them for proper evolution. Considering Smokehalf were worshipped in the past, modern Smokehalf still have a refined taste in food and will roast anything before eating it. It will use its tail as a flaming whip both in battle and to show disapproval. It has the abilities Blaze and Drought. Its original shiny was crimson, but since my new smoke calf is already redder than the previous form, I decided to make the shiny a golden calf. Smoke calf is intentionally a tall starter Pokemon to showcase how it views itself and evolves into a godlike Pokemon. That's why I didn't make its head to body ratio so big like all the other starters. While that was initially the problem with the original form, this one definitely has the right balance. But you never know, maybe in 3 years I'll shrink the body even more. All I know is that the values of the colors have more contrast and pop out, instead of blending with each other. The silhouette is infinitely better. It doesn't have the proportions of a realistic animal while still looking more animalistic since it doesn't have such an anthropomorphized face like the original smoke F that's staring right at you. It even looks more like a fire type than the original. All in all, exactly what I've been wanting to see for years. It was fun implementing all that I've learned over the last few years in order to create it. I'm insanely happy. Elephant, the moss Pokemon. Elephant are always happy to help. They use the tiny seeds that grow on their back and heads to plant gardens. Their strong memory allows them to remember where any sprout is growing. They can hold up to 4 gallons of water in their trunk and use it to water the plants that they carefully cultivate. They're clumsy but incredibly resilient. It is rare to see an elephant cry. Their skin is tough but their top halves are cushioned with a layer of soft moss and foliage. They're very loving but can get carried away with their affection. They are the heaviest and most massive partner Pokemon. Its ability is overgrow just like all grass type starters, but its hidden ability is harvest. The shiny is the color palette I would have given it if, it if I didn't have to conform to the standards of a starter Pokemon palette, and also consider the color harmonization with the other Sonian starters. A lot of other people make their elephant starters uh, a little too vague looking, either the ears and trunks are too small or the head is too humanoid. I purposely wanted to make my elephant Pokemon feel like an African elephant. Its ears are big and its body is grey. As you can see, its proportions are finally that of a starter. It doesn't have such an empty bottom half anymore now that there's more focus on the top half. And honestly, there is more little kid energy here, which makes it feel like something that you're just beginning to raise, as opposed to the original, which seems like it's already a bit tamed. My favorite change is the ear though. I love how it's no longer some vague shape without any purpose. Dolphlo, the wave Pokemon. Dolphlo is an extremely social Pokemon. It will use its sonar abilities to find other Pokemon to befriend. It can release powerful waves of both water and sound, and can communicate with its kind over long distances. They are very naive and trusting, but don't be fooled. They are extremely intelligent. While they constantly hope everyone they meet is as innocent as they are, they will never be tricked twice. They are very curious and inquisitive, but that oftentimes gets them into trouble with humans. Regardless, they will always save a human stranded at sea. It has the abilities Torrent and Analytic. Not that there's some magenta in Dolphlo's eyes, the shiny is actually the inverse of its color scheme. I knew I had to change Dolphlo the least. Comparing it to its original design is a masterclass in showing how simply changing just the proportions of a fake mon will make it more appropriately fill the niche it's supposed to be in, in this case an unevolved partner Pokemon. There is way less empty space, it looks far more juvenile, the extra color breaks the monochrome aesthetic of the original, honestly this one feels the realest out of the three. It's finally the Pokemon I imagined since I was like 4. Here is a video where I made completely new Pokemon from existing Pokemon names. Charizard, the Charisma Pokemon from Charisma and Wizard, a grass psychic type. Charizard is a sly Pokemon that outwits foes and charms its way out of trouble. It uses its carrot staff to amplify its psychic powers. Its hollow carrot is also a makeshift instrument. It plays invigorating tunes that heal people in Pokemon. In battle, it charges up and launches energy blasts from a distance. If it must, it will resort to whacking opponents with its staff, kicking its foes, and even whipping them with its long ears. It uses its powerful hearing to eavesdrop on others, learning of their plans, and reflecting back moves. Charizard is a bit selfish and egotistical, but will always come to the aid of others. It is surprisingly adept at supporting others in battle. It often devises schemes to acquire food and treasure for its friends and trainer. It has the abilities Healer, Super Luck, and Contrary. Its shiny is a bit more Bugs Bunny-esque. I originally wasn't going to take this video seriously and just make a bunch of joke mons, but when I had the idea to make an evolved form of Herit, I knew this complete family needed to be part of a future region, so I decided to put actual effort into the design, despite the names being completely impossible. That's why I really do need your help to give these mons actual names. UB Sight, Giratina, the fluorescent Pokemon, a ghost electric type, from Giraffe and Retina. It appeared from the Ultra Wormhole. 
It seems to only be encountered at night, following those who walk alone in the dark. There has not been an instance of attack. Its bright life force powers the lights around its lengthy body. Its hide is relatively tough and shiny. The glowing dots on this Pokemon are actually glowing eyes. It is impossible to sneak up on it. It can see in every direction, but below it. To combat this blind spot, it swings its head down below its body. In battle, it swings its head around to hit opponents. To finish off its foe, it releases a powerful optic laser from one of its eyes. It consumes nothing and produces no waste. Nobody knows why it follows lone wanderers. It has the ability Beast Boost. This shiny is bright as hell. This was another joke concept that ended up looking terrifying and perfectly fit in, in with the other Ultra Beasts. It feels exactly like a Cryptid or SCP. Zangoose the Chaos Pokemon, a psychic dark type, from Zany and Goose. Zangoose moves in ways that seems to defy the laws of physics. Its neck extends to triple its length and rotates 360 degrees. It uses telekinesis to juggle objects and spin around. It lives to entertain and will do anything to get a laugh. It will often juggle other tiny Pokemon to their dismay and startle others with its loud honk, only to then laugh in their faces and waddle away. Every part of its body makes a different sound, disturbing the peace of its neighbors. Its actions are unpredictable. In battle, it taunts its opponents and plays unfairly. It has the abilities Magician, Prankster, and Contrary. Its shiny is simply another type of Harlequin color palette. I think I was successful in making an extremely zany Pokemon that embodies the insane jester trope. I love Pokemon that are obviously dark type while not being edgy or all black. Pulling off of personality is what makes for some of my favorite Pokemon. Cloth, the mountain Pokemon, a rock ice type from Claw and Cliff. Their fur is coarse like rock and their claws easily cut through ice and stone, allowing them to repel from great heights. They spend their entire day slowly climbing down the mountain to grab a bite from their favorite trees and then climbing all the way back to the peak to sleep. They barely eat, but their metabolism is incredibly slow, allowing them to survive during the barren winters. They are incredibly resilient. They will continually sustain blows from foes as their claw slowly makes its way to their opponent's vitals. While it takes them a long time to land a hit, they will never give up. They always reach their goal. In battle, they freeze their solid head and headbutt foes. They can create snowstorms to evade predators. They have the abilities Snow Warning, Rock Head, and Refrigerate. Their shiny is almost like an autumn mountain during sunset. I love Pokemon whose body mimic entire landscapes. It feels like a walking mountain. It's relatively simple, but full of design traits that tell a story. Cobalion, Lion, the fierce Pokemon, a steel rock type from Cobalt and Lion. Cobalt Lion's rock body is covered in a mesmerizing metal. Since ancient times, humans have hunted this rare Pokemon to use its minerals as pigments. Kings would wear robes dyed in the color of this Pokemon's mane. Cobalt Lion prides have become extremely distrustful, despite the outlaw of this Pokemon's hunting. In ancient times, it would take 10 great men and their powerful Pokemon to take down a Cobalt Lion, as it slashes with its sharp claws and tail. When its mane is chipped, it produces a noxious powder that slows down its foes. Just as a hunting group would think that they have worn down Cobalt Lion, it would cause a rock slide and retreat to its deep cave. It has the abilities Rock Head, Tough Claws, and Solid Rock. Its shiny has a copper and topaz look to it. I need to turn this into an entire lion. It could be the Luxray or more appropriately Agron of my region. It's extremely cool. Here is part 2 of turning cartoon characters into Pokemon. Sharpray, the meddling Pokemon, a fairy type from Sharp both mentally and physically, and pray, but also like the verb to pray with an A-Y, since it's based on an angel. Both halves of the name are puns. Sharpray are curious creatures. They are highly intelligent, and will even approach their enemies to learn more about them. They can take their love of fun too far, as it gets them closer to danger. Luckily, they're incredibly fast, but even when chased, they will take the opportunity to strike back when possible. They only mess with those who have shown animosity to them. They rarely fall for the tricks of their predators. They will frame their enemies by making them seem guilty of Sharpray's pranks. At the end of the day, Sharpray is benevolent and quite caring, and will even share food with their predators to deter them from attacking Sharpray. In battle, they use their razor-sharp tail to swipe at opponents. In the wild, they cut down tall grass using their tail to reveal the hiding predators who wish to attack Sharpray. They have the abilities Prankster, Super Luck, and Justified. I do enjoy the contrast between the soft attributes and sharp tail. It looks bright-eyed, yet ready for business. The slice in the ears will complement Tom's Pokemon design, as well as its clear, angelic, or even cherubic design. Predator, the impulsive Pokemon, a dark type from Predator and Purr. Just like Tom, it's not as clever as Jerry's name. Predator have an intense rivalry with Sharpray. It spends its days trying to catch its prey with traps to no avail. 
their attacks usually backfire, causing Predator to yell at deafening volumes. It is surprisingly resilient and limber. They are known to withstand great blows and falls from great heights. Their body can easily contort, allowing them to minimize damage and get into tight spaces. They shred their opponents with their claws and are even known to trample. Predator easily makes enemies and will reluctantly fight them off. While vicious to wild prey, Predator are relatively fine house Pokemon and very dutiful pets. They have the abilities Limber and Rivalry with the hidden ability Defiant. Its shiny is modeled after Butch, the black cat that is sometimes Tom's friend or enemy depending on the situation. I'm glad the silhouette does look like a demon and the color scheme translates really well. I was scared that having this Pokemon look exactly like Tom wouldn't translate into Pokemon style, but changing unimportant things like its paws to introduce Pokemon elements was a good choice. I also like how both Fakemon were designed together to share small details like the ear, fur, snout, belly pattern, and of course, the ear slice. Hogrin, the slob Pokemon, a poison ground type. Hogrin is constantly snacking, converting the sugar from its food into crystals that surface on its body and harden. Their fat is stored on their top half and used as protection from attack. It is extremely lazy and will even consider surrendering when attacked, since its resilient body may handle the damage. It can withstand high levels of radiation. Hogrin produces a loud yelp when in danger. They are dim-witted, yet caring and surprisingly thoughtful. While they are tough to train, Hogrin is a reliable companion. They are known to lash out when provoked, but will immediately forget about revenge. They do not like to perform manual labor, despite being physically powerful. Its sugary fumes are so sweet, they cause headaches and nausea. Hogrin's sugary ring tail smells incredibly sweet. It attracts other Hogrin, who will nibble on each other's tails, forming a complete ring of Hogrin. They have the abilities Sticky Hold, gluttony, and the hidden ability, Thick Fat. Their shiny is even more pig-like, but also completes the flavor trifecta of strawberry, chocolate, and vanilla. Originally, I wasn't too proud of this design, but it ended up looking incredibly endearing. A little guy I can rely on to cheer me up. Stupid, but funny. And it totally embodies all that Homer is in one compact design. Lobstrike, the bruiser Pokemon, a water fighting type, from Lobster and Strike. Lobstrike are honorable brawlers who pack a powerful punch. They mutter as they walk on the beach, politely greeting local Pokemon and humans. They are compassionate yet have no patience for those who prey on the weak. Upon laying eyes on a bully, Lobstrike will try to intervene, however it won't strike until hit. Their upper body independently rotates allowing Lobstrike to spin its head and arms at propelling speeds, throwing consecutive punches. Lobstrike stores extra berries in its closed claws. It will open its claw and chow down to re-energize during battle. After a mighty brawl, this Pokemon returns to the sea and continues to explore. They often land on exotic islands and befriend a new set of locals, sharing its berries in the process. Its abilities are Iron Fist, Hyper Cutter, and a new hidden ability called Strong Finish, which boosts attack when a held item is used, as a nod to the fact that Popeye is strong to the finish when he eats his spinach. Its shiny is a nod to the shorts where Popeye would be wearing his white sailor uniform. While his design process was a tumultuous journey, I think the Pokedex entry and lore did make me like the guy, and even make his design more... make more sense, I guess. It was tough giving a lobster human attributes, since they're kind of like the opposite of humans, while also trying to make it look specifically like a cartoon sailor. In the end, it's the most faithful adaptation today in terms of concept, but mostly since Popeye was the first and only superpowered cartoon character in this video, so I could directly translate his powers into this Pokemon's, you know, moveset and powers, uh, power set. Humurk, the Cell Sword Pokemon, a steel fighting type, from human, mercury, and mercenary, since that's technically what Finn is. Humurk's limbs are made of a malleable metal that can change shape and density. In battle, Humurk happily turns its hand into a sword to take down opponents with. It merrily searches for adventure and lends its abilities to just causes. It often acts on impulse and boredom, but will always come to its senses. It can easily forgive those that have wronged it. Humurk's pliable body is squishy around friends and tough when facing enemies. It can inflate the size of its hand into a wrecking ball fist. When all else fails, its last resort is to give its enemies a hug, ultimately impaling them with his chest spike. Humurk has the abilities Iron Fist, sharpness, and steely spirit. His shiny makes him look more like a human, with a touch of Jake colors. It was tough coming up with its dex entry, since I'm currently rewatching Adventure Time after never finishing the last 20% of the series, so I didn't want to go, you know, too much, too deep into the research and spoil anything for me. But design-wise, it's the perfect balance of faithful and transformative. It works. Next was part three of 10 Poketubers Create One Pokemon. There are some huge twists in this one. Psychic, the Head Blast Pokemon, a psychic electric type from Psychic, Chick, and Sidekick. This confident Pokemon stands its ground as it shoots a powerful laser from the hollow comb cannon on its head. Psychic uses telepathy to control its loyal chicks in battle, however it will take the brunt of any attack for its children. Psychic defend the vast sewer mazes they call home, spreading their chicks around to remotely monitor their territory. 
I just opened up how the mod actually looks like. This thing looks crazy. Wait, this thing looks nuts. Wait, and the shiny's tough. Ooh. Oh. Mate, the shiny's really good as well. Side chick. Oh, it's cute. Yeah, it's got the blue lightning tail. I like, I like the, that's smart. The wobbly do that like birds have. Okay. Okay, cool. This is awesome. Yo, side chick category head blast. Look at that. That is, wow, you nailed it. That is perfect. Yes, exactly what I was thinking. We got the big bird and the baby bird. Dude, the shiny looks so dope. Oh, the little eye on the baby bird. That's so cute. There's like, there's so much to look at. What? Spouse Spark, the fusion Pokemon, a fire electric type Pokemon from Spouse and Spark. The shy and tiny male Spouse Spark is fused at the fin to its giant protective counterpart, who saps the energy from her mate. This loving couple lives in the deepest trenches, consuming the chemicals released from underwater volcanic vents, which powers up the bright lore on their head. Their body is incredibly tender, but will instantly harden when hit. Whoa! All right! Yo! <laughs> oh, wait! Wait, I nailed this! Wait, I nailed this! Wait, I nailed this! It is kind of wormy. Oh, there's a baby next to it like Mantine! Okay, okay, I see. Okay, this makes a lot more sense. Because in my head, I this is way better than what was in my head. Oh man. It's got the angler bobbies and it's long like an eel, but I love I love the, the whale mouth. Oh dude, it's a whale! Wait, is it a whale? I don't know anymore, but it does have that kind of underwater magma vibe that I was thinking. This is ridiculously cool. This is so freaking sick i love it <laughs> spouse spark and look it's not a turtle it's a giant type of whale oh i was so right it's like an underwater eel that's so cool <laughs> oh let's go oh it's like a real angler fish next was a video where i created evolutions to evolutions it was fun to make and did <laughs> it did really well umbrius the moonlight pokemon from Umbra meaning shadow and Deus meaning god, a dark poison type. Umbrius' whiskers allow it to locate prey. The spots on this Pokemon's fur can change color, allowing Umbrius to camouflage into its environment. Umbrius secretes an odorless sweat that completely cloaks its scent and location. Umbrius' prey never sense its presence. At the right moment, Umbrius pounces on its prey and injects a venom from its swollen tail that instantly knocks out its food. It is believed that gamma radiation reflected by the moon has been absorbed by Umbrius, giving it radioactive venom that destroys cells and even atoms. Tracking down an Umbrius is impossible. Its existence is legendary as a result of its mastery of evasion. It has the abilities corrosion and the hidden ability inner focus. I can't take credit for its awesome shiny since Umbreon already had a great shiny. I need you to remember the following though. All of the Pokemon evolutions in this video evolved via an item that unlocks the full potential of evolutions. It's the same item for all. I assume it's a straight up radioactive stone that destabilizes Eevee's DNA further, but I can't say I'm not biased towards this color scheme. It's amazing. Sure, in this video it's the evolution most similar to its previous form, but its body type is definitely heftier than Umbreon's and its skull is much more massive. Umbreon was always black cat coated, so to fully realize it as a leopard is what I've always wanted to see. Leafius, the verdant Pokemon, a grass ground Pokemon. As Leafius walks, the air behind it purifies. It strolls from forest to forest, revitalizing life. When it encounters particularly devastated ecosystems, it plants its hooves into the ground, stretching out roots for miles, and begins to replenish the environment's energy. It despises conflict, but will bash its antlers into those who hurt the planet. Leafius will send a storm of razor-sharp leaves to protect the forest. It's easy to track the path of Leafius, as the plants in its wake are far greener, but no trainer dares approach one and invoke the wrath of every forest Pokemon who's compelled to fight on behalf of Leafius. It has the ability Sap Sipper and Chlorophyll, and its shiny is just how I like it. I was gonna give it Grassy Surge originally, but that kinda weakens the power of Earthquake and Bulldoze, and I would definitely want Leafius to utilize Earthquake. But hey, if you think High Horse Power is enough to do the job, then let me know if you think Grassy Surge should be, a, you know, the ability instead. Design-wise, it's definitely more complicated than I anticipated one of these Pokemon being, but it still looks very natural, and definitely the natural progression of Leafeon. I'm in love with the colors and I'm proud of how I shaded the shrubbery. It's the first time I did it this way. Flarius, the flame Pokemon, a fire ghost type. 
When Flareon's ability to contain the heat within its fur is diminished, it spontaneously combusts and evolves into Flareus. This Pokemon is silent and contemplative. It barely reacts, but lets out a loud roar whenever it attacks. Its boiling fur swirls around it, protecting Flareus from harm. Its head is hard as bone. It launches itself with fire blasts that release from the striped holes on its body, headbutting foes. Now that its flame sack has burst, Flareus is constantly releasing an unstable amount of heat, so none of it's properly contained, therefore its emotions do not contribute to more or less firepower. In fact, Flareus does not emote at all. It is completely solitary. No soul dares approach it and risk spontaneous burns. It has the ability Rock Head and Guts. Can I get some love for its shiny in the comments? I thought Rockhead would would be nice so we can finally use moves like Flare Blitz and Wild Charge without any consequences. This is my favorite in terms of the art itself. The design, I think, successfully looks both approachable and eerie, like a beautiful flame. Very legendary looking too. Sylvius, the intertwining Pokemon, a fairy fighting type. Sylveon's suppressed rage and fighting skill is unleashed upon evolution. It is now able to fully sense aura and enhance its punches to crush boulders. It surges aura through its intertwining ribbon-like feelers that wrap around its arms to release devastating blows to its opponent's vitals. It wraps its prey in ribbons only to finish them off with consecutive punches. It is very efficient and does not make any superfluous moves. It goes directly for its opponent's weak spot and finishes them off as quickly as possible. The duality between its desire to fight and end conflicts leaves it fairly unsatisfied. It's common for Sylvius to calm down other Sylvius so that they can find momentary peace. Throughout history, humans have used Sylvius as the symbol of man's duality, the capacity for both war and peace. It has the abilities Unburden and Pixelate. I love the pose I gave it and the shading that adds more dimension to its design is immaculate. Since I'm still not a master, I definitely struggle with making my art a bit flat, although that's mostly because of the time constraints when making these videos, but this is a design I'm personally confident in how three-dimensional it looks. Then was another video where I created new Pokemon by replacing a letter in existing Pokemon names. Cold Duck, the duck Pokemon, a pure ice type. Cold Duck can be found in brutally frigid environments. It defends its territory from intruders with the sharp ice crown. Cold Duck Cold Duck fight among themselves for dominance by headbutting each other with their heads. Their icicle crown gets damaged every summer but will regrow by winter. They use their crown to break ice as they swim. Their thick feathers protect them from extreme temperatures. They hunt in packs led by the most dominant male. They tear apart their prey with their sharp beak. They have the hidden ability Ice Body, Anger Point, sorry, hidden, did I say hidden ability? They have the, the, just the normal ability Ice Body, Anger Point, and the hidden ability Slush Rush. Their shiny is self-explanatory, not not gonna lie, this is my favorite Pokemon. Wait, not my favorite Pokemon, sorry. My favorite type of Pokemon. This is what happens when you don't cut. My favorite type of Pokemon. I already like the vibe of Golduck, so a more serious and cooler version only makes me like it even more. I love the slightly more diverse color palette when compared to when compared to Golduck, for example, but the contrast between the two is what I enjoy the most. The int the interactions between a Golduck and Golduck would be incredibly entertaining. Honestly, I messed up way less than usual there. Maybe it's because I psyched myself out. I don't know. Feraligato, the big jaw Pokemon, a pure water type. Feraligato, Feraligato, Feraligato strikes, it's not strikes, stalks. Feraligato stalks its prey in the night. The power of its arms are staggering. One swipe can paralyze a foe. It finishes off its prey with its mighty jaw, which it uses to savagely tear up its victims with. No, which it uses to savagely tear its victims up. Yeah, that's it. It loves water and exclusively lives in damp areas such as swamps and lakes. It rivals no Pokemon. It uses its whiskers to find food and sense incoming rain. Its night vision allows it to see clearer than even what we see during the day. They are rather playful with any trainer that has raised it since birth. It has the abilities Torrent uh, and Sheer Force and even Feraligator's Shiny. It's definitely a ripoff of Feraligator, but like, that's the point. I think the fusion was successful. I'm a huge Feraligator fan, and since literally everything from the original Pokemon is intact, I can't help but love this guy too. Rose Rave, the flashy Pokemon, a grass electric type. On a remote tropical island, the native Pokemon have evolved for a perpetual party. When exposed to the shiny stone, the Roselia born on this island evolve into Rose Rave. Their bioluminescent pistols produce strobing light that blinds foes and shocks opponents. 
They produce their own energy and don't need to consume sunlight to live, allowing them to sleep during the day and party all night long. They love to dance and socialize, but if a crowd becomes too rowdy or a fight breaks out on the dance floor, they shoot electrifying lasers from their glowing pistols and incapacitate the party poopers. The leaves on their body is where I lost my where my where is the what where am I in the on the on the on the script? Their leaves on their body are sparkly and reflective. Their silver leaves reflect light while their green leaves absorb it. It produces an aroma that increases the desire to dance for those around them. They have the abilities natural cure and lightning rod with the hidden ability dancer. Honestly, Rose Raid canonically dances considering it's based on a patron of a masquerade ball, so having a regional form that dances in a rave makes total sense. It's a joke fake mon, but could easily be retooled to work in the Pokemon world. Sana, the Dream Eater Pokemon, a psychic fire type. In a region between Kalos and Hoenn, there lives a Pokemon related to Muna named Sana. It floats around when the sun is up, consuming the daydreams of others. When it eats a particularly imaginative and pleasant daydream, it produces white smoke. It has been used for centuries to ease anxiety, since it simply eats the uneasy thoughts that enter the minds during the day. People gathers a peeper Peeper? Peeper. People gather around Sana to socialize in bliss. When humans congregate to worship, Sana is there to make sure nobody's mind drifts into boredom. It has the ability Levitate and the hidden ability Sweet Veil. I thought that its charge shiny would be appropriate and that Levitate would help as a fire type. I kind of combined the idea of incense and a water pipe, you know, that Arabians would traditionally gather around and socialize with. And technically, this is this could be an, uh, an Asonian. This could be an Asonian form of, of Muna. Honestly, I'll just, yeah, it is. I declare it an Asonian Muna. Mangoose, the Mangoose Pokemon, a normal type Pokemon. Memories of its battles against other Pokemon consume it. They do not the, they do not enjoy the company of other Pokemon and in fact act like humans. They are known to sit at the table and even converse with humans. They understand human speech and respond with honks and squeaks, not squeaks, squawks. Goose, geese do not squeak. They move like humans and in battle fight with kicks and swipes from their talons. They maintain composure, but will go berserk when losing to other Pokemon, especially after a showcase of elemental mastery. As a result of their abuse by other Pokemon, they see other species as inferior. They are great swimmers, but do not utilize a single water type move. They can be insecure about their shallow move pool. They have the abilities Guts, Analytic, and Scrappy. Their shiny is akin to a rusted bronze statue. I'm a fan of how I kept it's a feud, but instead of with Sviper, it, it, its feud is with every Pokemon, I guess. The idea is that it's extremely normal like a human and doesn't like other Pokemon who can harness the elements and blast fire or shoot lightning. It's a fine idea. Then I made part two of turning legendary Pokemon into regular Pokemon. It did not do as well as the first part. Don't know why. Even though the fake mon are as good or even better. Meowchant, the hereditary Pokemon, a psychic type from Meow and Mutant. This Pokemon's genes are so pure, they are directly linked to the new species Pokemon Mew. It walks around consuming knowledge, it never forgets, and is often used as an assistant to important scientists and leaders. Its telekinesis is so precise, it can thread a needle and tie a knot using its mind. Mountains are currently being trained to perform surgery. It isn't particularly friendly, but will genuinely listen to those who teach it about life. In battle, it emits a force that repels attacks. It enjoys when its opponents overcome its moves, giving it the opportunity to learn a new technique and fortify its skills. It has the abilities Magic Bounce, Telepathy, and the hidden ability Protean. Its shiny is similar to Mewtwo's. Honestly, it's a pretty straightforward design. Mewtwo, if it wasn't legendary. I think I was successful in doing that. I could have made it cuter, but then it would have looked like a Prevo for sure. Imperios, the infinite sky Pokemon, a flying type from Imperion, related to heaven or the sky, and the male suffix Os. Imperios flies over the open ocean from region to region. It spends most of its life in the air, learning aerial maneuvers in solitude. It is compelled to find a mate, but prioritizes flying. It only rests when arriving at its current destination. Those who have encountered Imperios immediately understand its goals and endeavors. Imperios and their trainers somehow understand each other without exchanging any words. In battle, it generates tornadoes. Its feathers reflect the atmosphere, allowing it to hide in the sky. It has the abilities Cloud9, Super Luck, and the hidden ability Gale Wings. Its shiny is the same as Latios's. I'm generally proud of this one. Latios has always been super cool, so making a, a Pokemon related to it that is both cute and cool has always been my dream. It's really charming, and its relation to Togekiss is very intriguing. Feminut, the Apricorn Pokemon, a grass type from Feminine and Nut. This Pokemon has the exterior of an Apricorn. Its sturdy shell is contrasted by its soft heart. 
It's incredibly caring and nurturing. It will even carry small Pokemon inside its hollow body. Flowers bloom from its arms. Pokemon are attracted to it, as if a force is pulling them closer to Feminut. Within its body is a soul heart. Previously thought to be exclusive to Magirna, it was in fact studied and recreated in order to create Magirna's artificial soul. Its shiny is a pastel blue and green to match the soft colors of its original palette. It's cute. What more can you ask for? It looks like a children's toy, very nostalgic to me. Insectile The Paleozoic Pokemon, a bug rock type from Insect and Projectile. Over 300 million years ago, it was feared as the strongest of hunters. It mercilessly pursued its prey through the thick primordial jungles. Camouflaged by the brush, this Pokemon would shoot a sharp rock from the cannon-like appendage on its back. Its remains have been found fossilized in tar. It has been revived from modern fossils. Its disposition seems to be incompatible with modern civilization, but it's relentless in competitive Pokemon battles. Repeated instances of this Pokemon continuing to attack after knocking out its opponents have led it to be banned from Pokemon battles in most regions. It has the abilities Battle Armor, Sniper, and Technician. God, this shiny is so cool. It's scary. I love how scary it generally is. It's not too different from the Genesect we're used to, but they are the same Pokemon after all. Tabul the land Pokemon, a grass ground Pokemon, from Taboo and Bull. This hardworking Pokemon spends its day clearing, tilling, and fertilizing fields. The crops grown by this Pokemon are unparalleled. With the toll of its bell, plants begin to grow. With the stomping of its hooves, entire fields are pulverized. It is incredibly hardworking. Out of respect for its burden, it is forbidden to antagonize Tabo. Its hide is as hard as bark. Its abilities are Kudchu, Anger Point, and Grassy Surge. Honestly, I like this more than Tapu Bulu. I like how it's hardworking as opposed to the lazy Tapu Bulu. Next is episode 10 of 4 artist designed Pokemon from the same description, where our task was to create 3 Pokemon whose type was completely ambiguous. I urge you to watch the full video, because we actually guessed the type of these Fakemon, while in this compilation, the types of the Fakemon are, are going to be revealed. This is <laughs> Secret, the Paradise Pokemon, a pure grass type, as you can see. Uh, while it appears to take the form of a beautiful bird, it is in fact a plant-based Pokemon. It pretends to be a fierce predatory bird Pokemon in order to ward off the bug types that it's weak to. So it, uh -huh. it just climbs to, you know, on tall trees to bathe in the sun, uh, which replenishes the vibrancy of its uh, petals. Technically based on an egret, which is like a type of bird that kind of has this shape a little bit. But it's also based on um, the secretary bird. I do really like the shiny as well, how the, the legs are just kind of like literal sticks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that was the, the plan, but... It's well, the shiny is actually based on the other kind of Birds of Paradise flower that looks more like that. Menace Plate, obviously the trickery Pokemon because it does disguise itself as an orchid, but they also like the size of a flower so they can just chill on a flower and people don't notice them. Oh yeah, they're tiny. Yeah, they're tiny. So they're two siblings that only care about each other. They like camouflage off as flowers in order to steal food and valuables. And uh, if caught, they hurl dust at their opponent and run away. <laughs> <laughs> One usually Very comes good. up. One of them is like the mastermind, like they come up with the schemes while the other one just happily obeys, guess which is which. They only care about each other, about the survival of the others, so like they're really like close to each other and they, they, it's them against the world. And I like the kind of theater mask influence with the exactly, expressions yeah. as well. It almost looks like gremlin ears as well, which kind of like yeah. fits into the uh, yeah. fairy. Exactly, that's literally uh, yeah. why. Exactly. The markings are literally oh. just for show. They just scare off, yep. you know, opponent, uh, foes, but in reality it's just like really friendly. Uh, and when you know someone shady just appears, it just glares at them. It does. It just yep. st stares because the patterns do the talking. It, it, if attacked, though, it, it will retaliate with a devastating bite. And its skin is very tough too. Like very, it's very hard to like attacks glide off of it. Basically, I love how the ability, its two main abilities, are just like swapped depending on if it's looking at someone or if someone's looking at it. Because intimidate mm. lowers the enemy's attack, and a guard dog ups its attack if something uses Intimidate on it, I believe is how Guard Dog works. It basically has Intimidate, or if it gets Intimidated, it's like, step up, and it just gets even stronger. <laughs> yeah, it will it will bite back if you attack, or if you like are actually threatening, mm -hmm. um, but it'll stare for at least a minute first. Here is part four of 10 Poketubers, one Pokemon. I think the following two are the most cohesive in the series. Ampharum from Amphibian and Ferrum, the Latin word for iron. This eager Pokemon jumps from mountain to mountain, merrily feeding on rare minerals. The metals found in their diet are absorbed into their skin, replenishing the defense of their iron warts. When spotted, they instantly summon a snowstorm and vanish. I'm really excited to see this. So glad you gave me body type. All right, let's see the frog. It's so happy. I love it. Yes. Oh, wow, he's kind of cute in, in a weird way. Oh, look at him. 
love it. He's so happy. Oh, that's so lovely. Look at it. You know, he's a cute boy. Oh, that's actually so cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. I, yeah, I like this a lot, actually. Yo, okay, so it is a frog. Oh, okay. Oh, he's like, yeah, he's a little toad. He's a little toad guy. I love that. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, okay. Wait, this is actually really good. <laughs> Dea Storm, the false legendary Pokemon from Deus, meaning God or deity, and Storm. This nature spirit surrounds itself in a protective sand facade that takes the shape of a powerful dragon. It has the ability to change the weather and was worshipped as an agricultural sky god. In reality, Dea Storm cannot control its powers and pretends as if the rain it conjures is intentional. Alright, let's take a look. Oh my god, this one's so cool! Whoa! Yep, this thing looks sick. Oh, that is really cool! Oh, that is so, that's actually so sick. Okay, I feel like I can vibe with this. No, okay, no, you know what? He's cool looking, I love him. Like the design is sick. Okay, I'm liking this. Oh, wow. Oh, that's a cool looking dragon. That is a smug boy. And finally was the third installment of turning cartoon characters into Pokemon. Rembrandt, the memory Pokemon a psychic dark type. On occasion, Rememboot is oafish yet kind, but is prone to being selfish and reckless. They are highly competitive and never go easy in battle. They attack their foes with a flurry of punches that stimulate the brain of their opponent. Their strikes are so devastating, they put their foe in a trance, forcing them to reminisce about the past, all while forgetting that they are fighting Rememboot. Rememboot is extremely lazy, but will work surprisingly hard when they set their mind. While their actions drive others away, Rememboot are highly social and need a family to survive. Groups of Rememboot will often sit in a circle and reminisce. They have a new ability called Cutaway, which is basically reverse emergency exit. When their opponent's HP is knocked to half, they begin to remember the past and forget that they are in a battle, forcing their trainer to withdraw them and send out another Pokemon. It's shiny is closer to the colors I would have given it if I didn't have to make it look like Peter. Honestly, I thought this was going to be the hardest one in the in the video to design since it had the least fantastical origin, but the fact that it somehow works is astonishing. I have way more confidence in this video now. Ravenger, the empath Pokemon from Raven as, as in the dark color, and Avenger, a ghost dark type. Revenger brutally takes down those that target the weak. It does not tolerate exploitation and will hunt down those that have abused their power. They can project their soul to incapacitate foes and even enter their dreams. They can manipulate objects using psychokinesis and fly. They perch up high in order to sense the feelings of others, looking out for trouble to thwart. Revenger can absorb the pain of others, risking the possibility of going berserk as it holds on to the pain and rage of those they heal. They can extend their shadow in order to trap their opponents. They happen to be rather shy but will open up to their friends. They have the ability Synchronize, Magic Bounce, and the hidden ability Bad Dreams. Their shiny is referenced to White Raven. It was a long journey, but I'm happy with the results. It's a guardian angel like Gardevoir, but more brutal. It's an anti-hero to Gallade's uh, heroic persona. Makin, the construction Pokemon from Making and Kin, since they are a pair of relatives. They are grass and fairy types. This pair of siblings are best friends that live to construct. They seize every day and plan elaborate activities, constructions, and games for them and all the Pokemon in the forest. Their activities were a mystery for centuries. It was only until modern technology allowed their antics to be photographed and documented that the extent of their genius was fully discovered. They can quickly grow entire structures from wood and return their constructs to the earth in order to make room for the next day's pursuits. They barely bicker and channel their energy to only the most productive endeavors. In battle, they summon roots to defend each other. Most of their body is hollow, allowing them to occasionally float on the wind and disappear. They have the abilities Prankster, Friend Guard, and Wind Rider. Their shinies are simply inverse. I feel like this fake pond has the best balance of any in the series. It's clear what the origin is while deviating enough to be creative while still retaining the charm of their inspiration. Their concept is based on the main trait of their cartoon and naturally implements it into the world of Pokemon. I'm very happy with this. Nyantum. The playful Pokemon, a ghost normal type from Nyan and Phantom. Nyantum are friendly and energetic Pokemon who love to help. In battle, they become intangible, allowing their opponent's moves to pass through them. They can phase through solid matter, vanish, and hover above the ground. They swipe their opponents from a distance, releasing a slash made of ectoplasm that hits their opponent. They can momentarily overshadow their foes, entering their bodies to influence their actions. When it senses danger, Nyantum releases a visibly cold breath. 
Yantam tends to play with their opponents and catches them off guard with their tricks. When Yantam is on the brink of defeat and stops playing around, they unleash their signature move, Ghostly Roar, a ghost version of Boom Burst based on Danny's ghostly wail. They have the abilities Justify and a new one called Intangible. With this ability, Nyantam can only be hit by moves that make direct contact. It can still be hit by non-damaging moves though. Their shiny is closer to Danny's human colors minus the red. This was definitely the toughest of the four to design. Thank you so much for even making it this far. I'm very grateful for all the opportunities I had this year to evolve this channel. It's the first year where I completely dove into fake mon creation videos. In 2020, my channel was 50% fake mon, but in 2023, it was basically 90% fake mon videos. So thank you for sticking around for such a big shift. Who knows how the channel will evolve? But for now, I'll see you guys next year.